Pussy derivative deal. Can I offer you some tea? Good tea. Nice house. Good. Would you make me some of that lo make soup? <laughs> Greetings and felicitations. Hello and welcome to Plomink Tea Time number 45. I'm very excited today because we're going to talk about, I'm here with Tony Stark from Stark of Iron to talk about warp drive and how scientists today are arguing about its possibilities. Some say there's potential, others say it's impossible, and I thought it might be fun to explore these ideas. I am not a physicist. I only took up to physics two in university, but I like to say that I'm a fan of the higher sciences, and as such, I am also a fan of Tony Stark, who has done considerably more research and study into the sciences beyond the kinetic, that I asked for him to be here today to help us navigate the idea of faster than light travel in both fiction and whether it has any potential in reality. Hello, Tony, and thank you for being here today. Good tea. Nice house. <laughs> <laughs> it's good That's to see good. you guys today. Uh, I'm be a little honest with you. I'm waking up. Uh, so just give me a few uh, ticks more and then. I well, sure. Start... Do, you, do you need to go get coffee or something? Oh, no, no, it's no. It's all good because I, I can hang out. I'm drinking some Energon right now. Energon. Oh, so you got something going, well, at least for, for at least a, a little while. You're going to be going like the Energizer Bunny today. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. The only tragedy we have is that um, we only have him to learn for for a couple of hours, but we're going to make the most of it. Typically, a, if you... a couple hours, but I will be here. And... Right. Yes. Typically, if you catch me out in the wild, my perspective on time warp travel, rather, time travel. <laughs> I got something else on my mind, obviously. My perspective on warp travel is rather simplistic since it is against the laws of physics to travel in space faster than the speed of light, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second. The answer proposed by warp travel is to move the space around the traveler instead, which is ostensibly not bound by that cosmic speed limit. So yes, that's why uh, the concept behind a thesis that I'll be discussing later uses the uh, wrap drive or the warp wrap bubble of uh, spatial folding as its uh, concept and how we could possibly achieve that. Um, but uh, we're definitely getting ahead of the the curve there. Uh, okay. As it were, so, uh, you know, we're we're over the curve, not under the curve. Let's let's discuss about the area under the curve first. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, yeah, the area under yeah. cur the curve is the part where I can color in the lines a little easier. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I have you here today, Tony. So we could explore this concept oh. a little deeper, which is great because I didn't I didn't have time for research at all, actually. But this is perfect for you to be here because you are a great launching off point for me to actually get into this concept in a way that is understandable because you you do have a good way of making this kind of science accessible so i thank you for that all all of this this warp travel it's supported by einstein's general relativity which does the math on how space-time bends around matter and energy mm. aside from the cosmic speed limit for matter and energy if you could travel close to the speed of light you encounter time dilation. You might be able to reach a star, for example, that is 150 million light years away within your own lifespan. But by the time you get home, 300 years will have gone by. So that's why humans have this desire to not only speed up this type of travel, but also get around this tragic effect of losing time with everyone you know. We want to explore space, but be able to come home and that's the romanticism of warp travel. And I do enjoy that on a fictional basis in science fiction narratives. But at the same time, I like to explore what excites scientists to actually try to make this a reality. Well, it's as Carl Sagan put it, uh, 
we we yearn to sail forbidden seas and to achieve areas that you know are out of our reach it's it's always been mankind's destination to look to its stars this for the true path of its future and and this is no different and so the appeal behind getting out there is getting out there we, we we feel like we're going into a state of cabin fever we're in what a lot of people consider to be the most boring time period of human history we were born too late to discover the world and we were born too early to discover other worlds where but that other people say that we well what i say is that we've missed out on a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. to to continue space travel in some sense because we kind of just stopped around before the 1980s even happened and there was a, there was a lot of excitement on how we could at least explore our backyard here in the solar system so our, uh, i'd call it arrested development it is arrested development in a lot of senses because you know we are very financial as a species we're very ferengi-esque with uh, how much is this going to cost us mentality. And that is, you know, on one hand, it does merit development and incentive, but on the other hand, it does not merit the entirety of development and incentive. We only want to deal with what's profitable, what's going to make us money. And But, but these anyone who is looking for profitability should be looking to the stars because much oh, of yeah. the inventions and everything that we all, lots of scientific advancements come from mm -hmm. space tra travel, even just, even just what we do now with the satellites and the rovers yeah, have I mean, contributed to lots of inventions and profitable things. Mm -hmm. So anybody who doesn't see that is short sighted. They are very short sighted. I mean, we have what could solve all of our energy problems just literally, you know, 180,000 some odd miles away from us. And then, you know, that's not including all of the precious metals. There's an asteroid in the belt called Pallas for a reason is because it is 63% oh. palladium and platinum. There, you know, yes, but the question for that is, is the cost of the space travel and mining mm -hmm. the resources, does it does it pan out to make a profit once the materials make it to Earth and is well, refined? This is, this is a concept that, you know, that I think I've discussed mm -hmm. either on your show or on mine. But yeah. um, the idea of taking unmanned rocket drones and and finding a target rock and having it pilot said rock back and put it into, you know, near Earth orbit for us to then uh, more affordably uh, excavate, hollow out, and, and mine out. Um, but I doubt that that's going to happen in our lifetime. You know, we're talking about trying to get to, you know, Proxima Centauri without dying and without going through an entire human generation, sometimes two to get there. And we still, you know, and that's like centuries out of our. our and, and you're talking about if we if we create the multi-generational spaceships that we really actually could make today. Yeah. Colony ships, uh, horizon projects. Um, and it's relatively easy to create like a colony ship of that matter. We have research many real world propulsion systems i believe i discussed how the orion project uh, which used a series of explosions to accelerate a craft could be used on a large scale to push a colony ship along it uses nuclear weapons it uses atomic devices yes uh it has a big bell to receive the shock wave of an atomic time atomic blast which then pushes into the colony ship and it's bearing and spring load would then react and start thrusting the ship forward faster and faster. And then of course you let out another atomic device, <laughs> detonate it, let out another atomic device, detonate it, let out another atomic device, detonate it. And it, the rest is just inertial transference and you can achieve, you know, 
roughly about the quarter of the speed of light to, to and get that light. that would be that would be really cool except for that isn't there a law against using nuclear weapons in space so that's what keeps us from doing that well that's because they still have the word weapon attached to it notice i use yeah. the word atomic device Atomic Means, device. Yeah, yeah, because it isn't being used as a weapon. It's being right. used as any any sort of way mm -hmm. that we power a, uh, any kind of engine or anything could be used as a weapon, too. So so definitely it makes sense to change the language on that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I couldn't think of a better use high. of that kind of thing. I believe the first thing we should cover, in case everyone here hasn't covered it but it's meant for those who come by and go hey man what's all this warp travel about yo well oh before know. we before we get to that can i can i say hello to the chat because i got yeah yeah, yeah. It. i i want to say hello certainly, to certainly. hello pleasant... everybody in yonder chats chat realm yeah and hello to pleasant valley picker he was here he said that all the comments before him have been dis erased and that is YouTube true on the youtube side that. It's true on the stream yard side. I don't know who said things before that, but thank you to whoever mm -hmm. did. And also hello to Ari Bavel, Franco Walker. And Lemon Pie is also here today saying hello to you, Tony, and Canadian Spider-Man. And also our favorite, favorite troll here. Uh, good guy. Kronos is not a troll. He Kronos is a yeah no. He's the king of trolls, but he is the sweetest troll you'll ever meet, and somebody who you want in your chat. If you oh, uh, if exactly. you have a channel and you see Kronos, you know you have a, a good you have, you're doing something right. Now, Kronos is in my chats a lot. <sighs> Pleasant good. Valley Pickers he says. Did Jill say catch me out in the wild? How about that? Yes, <laughs> I did. That means I'm just traveling around YouTube, hanging out. Mm -hmm. Canadian Spider-Man says, hey, folks, watching live are those on, watching on the replay. Please consider, please enjoy the show. Consider hitting the subscribe button to help anti-derivative Jill grow this channel. Yes, absolutely. I'm pretty close. I'm close, close-ish to 500. It, it might take a couple months, but I'll get there. He's Franco on the road to 500. I am. I am. Franco Walker says, every evening at this time, 8, 1815, my internet turns to shit for about half an hour. Oh, faster than light travel. Yes, Cronus. That's the topic today. Uh oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that, Canadian Spider Man. Smoke moved in overnight. Hope it clears again. I hope. You get rain or something. That's not cool. No, I said, how about that, Darius Munchausen? But we're getting there. Uh, Stargates are the answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be um, one of the topics for sure. Yeah, wormhole physics. We will be discussing uh, Hawking's uh, thesis and conjectures on uh, applied fixations with wormholes and spatial folding. Oh, yes. That would be good. Uh, mm -hmm. Finding a stable wormhole is the issue. Mark Harkness says, Hello all. I expect to hear more from knowledgeable folks than myself. I do not know how FTL will work. I do know the means will not be founded by someone who does not at least believe it possible. Yes, exactly. And of course, I don't mind listening to physicists who believe it's impossible, but I do like to see their working out if I can figure it out myself, even though that kind of science is something that is on my list of things to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, okay. So Franco Walker says the atomic engine was worked out in the fifties. Yeah. So it was, it was something, the Orion project that um, Tony's talking about. It was something that was conceived of early in the last century. So it, it's something that we've always been thinking about. Mega croppers here. Hello. Has Scotty R37 got a job? Um, I'll have to ask him. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think so right now, but he's he's doing his best. He he's on on the road to victory. And hello to Sean Carter. Hey, great to see you here too. And so now we are ready to uh, <laughs> we got we oh, got yeah. we got 
I demand cold fusion. <laughs> Did Jill say cash ca cash me outside? How about that? No, I didn't say that. Wait I a minute. Did. <laughs> She said she's whenever PvP was like, oh yeah, uh catch me in the wild. And I was like, yeah, how about that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I missed the reference. Thank you. But yes, now I am ready. Let's 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 figure this stuff all out. All right, all right. It's lecture time, kiddies. Welcome to the symposium. Today we will be discussing warp travel and all of the aspects within. So I suppose we should probably start with the foundational physics of what makes warp at this current injection and conjecture impossible. And that's establishing what zero resting mass is, what photonic uh, existence is, what a photon does when it's traveling versus masses greater than it, which is all any and all um, how it correlates with uh, space time. And, uh, Basically, general relativity as a whole, uh, time dilation notwithstanding, which is a, a founding uh, a founding cornerstone in the Trek version of the warp drive, is relative space time to the craft in general. Uh, if you notice that whenever the starship goes into warp, it'll often exit out of warp at regular intervals, basically to let the universe play catch up before they go into warp again, because obviously when they exit out of warp, uh, based on whatever warp factor that they're traveling at, they got to factor in, okay, well, what, what kind of mass do we need to chill by so that the universe plays catch up before we make another small jump and then another small jump to go from star base to star base. And what is the universe catching up with? Their relative space time. Or they're actually catching up to it basically so like you know as you travel forward in time or travel forward and at faster than light you're traveling back in time so you want to offset that by being around a large mass so that the universe catches up to your relative space time to the point in time in which everybody is communicating and existing on so it's like an interstellar whenever they were, you know, that many years from Earth and, you know, they were on large bodies and near black holes. And so time for the Earth was going sporadically into the future versus if you were traveling that much faster in light with your warp drive, you would be massively going back into the relative past of the space time continuum. So you is even that really out the case? I way. I didn't realize that warp travel involved. I, I I was under the assumption that time travel to the past is functionally impossible. Relative time dilation based in your position, your speed, and the masses around you in space time causes dips, bends in perspective to different observers depending on their location okay i really That's wish i could just draw this out um that would be nice you know that is one of the one of the things on my expense list is to buy a drawing tablet that way i can do some math because that's the only reason I don't do math on the channel, because I am a pen and paper kind of girl. So that's the only way that you would see me do it. All right. I'm going to scribble this. All right. That'd be great. Yeah, please do. All Can right. you? Here, yeah. That would be great. Here is the starship. And we'll just say, here's the star base. And while you're doing that, I'll, I'll catch up with the chat here. That'll work. All right, we'll say. <laughs> oh, Canadian Spider Man. We, Canadian Spider Man and I are moderators on Doomcox channel. And one of the things that we miss the most are the sex bots. For whatever reason, we get the joy, uh, we get a massive joy from squashing them. And they have disappeared almost entirely. And as much as we complain about them, every once in a while, we like to see them so that we can kill them. But they're gone for now. 
And, and, and in effect, it is a good thing for everybody that they're gone. It's just a selfish thing that we have that we want to smash them. Ready shield, stand by with the grappler. Oh, okay. Canadian Spider-Man is talking about Enterprise with their grappler. I love the grappler as a preliminary technology to the tractor beam. So cool. We could we could make something like that now. That's why I like Enterprise, because it has lots of technology we can do right now. Franco Walker says, I thought Kennedy was supposed to be on tonight. Um Well, there there was a change in plans. Pleasant Valley Picker CA says, man, Jill is going through the chat at warp speed. Yeah, that's the idea. Magic Carpet Ride says Scotty R37, which of course is the fictional basis of the, the, the song that Zephyr Cochran played during First Contact when we had Star Trek's first warp travel occur in that movie all right well, I'll do a little test it's here make sure it's position movie. right okay oh my oh, god okay hold on we got we got Maybe left -handed. We got diagrams hold on i need to make you mm -hmm. let me pull you over here all right okay okay so here is my really crudely drawn starship okay Let's just say it's going at warp factor eight. Now, the line above it is your relative space time. That is the universe as we see it, where we are traveling into the future one second at a time at the speed of normal time. Okay. You have your starship that's going to go at warp factor eight. It's destination to star base over here on the other side here. Okay. Kitten. <laughs> hey, that's great. Oh, it's not well, you know what? That's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing you can encounter in space. You just hit an asteroid. <laughs> so what right, happens when right, that happens? Right. So, say for example, the starship's going at warp factor eight. So it's at FTL, based on that much of an, uh, a, you know, how fast it's going, right? So if it's going faster than the speed of light by an exponential rate, then it is going relatively into the past on relative space time versus every or into the future versus everybody else's perspective okay so like oh okay you're leaving people in the past you're going into the future that yeah, makes more but sense then you have to stop at a large mass like say a black hole or, or you know a massive star because this is two warp jumps right now if you remember an in interstellar the world itself, relative space time, was going to the future while they were experiencing time at regular speed because they were close to a black hole, right? So the mm -hmm. world started to go into the future without them because they were close to a black hole or they were close to a large mass. So this starship is letting regular relative space time catch up to them because now they are by a large mass for a pit stop. Right, and then they travel their warp eight jump to get to the star base, and they have the ability to compute this, and that's how they're able to warp from like one star base to another that would span, you know, God knows how many thousands of light years at a time. Yeah, that is, that is the question. How do you direct warp travel? And, and ask, ask the guys in sci-fi. I'm just giving you a basis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we really had warp travel, we'd just be uh, going somewhere. We would somewhere. have to play the hokey pokey with space time. Like, yeah. you know, put your FTL in, put your large mass out, put your FTL in, and pray that everything works. And mm -hmm. um, somehow, some way, they always seem to make it on time. Oh my goodness, my stream elements is amazing because good afternoon to Dad Man walking and just as he arrived, my stream elements put put up his link. Thank you so much, stream elements. You are such a great help. It's subscribed to Dad Man Walking mm -hmm. at Dad Man Walking 55. And definitely check out his channel. His channel is blowing up. It was growing faster than mine even even a couple of weeks ago, but but recently, he's been having phenomenal numbers in his live streams. And if if you want to have a good time and a lot of fun, check out his channel. He talks about 
uh, Star Wars and other sci-fi, but also he talks about football and sports and all these other things. He's He's got a very eclectic personality, and it's a lot of fun to go on travels with him and his wife, Mrs. Dadman Walkie. Thank you for being here. So are you getting the uh, the concept of what I'm putting down now? Like in between traveling personally, which would, you know. Well, a lot of this, a lot of this would re require understanding how space time is. And relatively works. Yes. Relativity. Uh, how does space time get like, cause I understand basic kinetics of, of, you know, speed and velocity mm -hmm. and all that but, mm -hmm. but how how does space time work on a very in, intricate elementary level is something that everybody would need to know before even touching any of this basically the federation's method of warp drives and being able to have star bases thousands of light years away from each other and still be able to communicate with one another is they're literally skipping rocks across the fabric of space time. You know, whenever they're in warp, they're obviously flying over the water. And then as it lands, it, 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 it you know, the water ripples and recognizes it and catches up with it. And then they warp again. And you never see just, Oh, we're going to stay in warp space for, you know, days on end. Usually a warp jump is very, small and timed and you see it as they transition from one part of the scene to the next whenever they you know they make pit stops they make right re regular pit mm -hmm. stops and, and that's and, the analogy is the water analogy is mm -hmm. it, the naval sense and we definitely do feel that mm -hmm. uh, pvp says as much as i love jill's tea time i'd not want to be on this panel as i am a clueless dummy with the science stuff and i'm not a I'm not a real physicist either, PvP. I'm just here to have a good time and try to figure out some of this stuff. And I do appreciate the diagram that you came up with, with to explain how how mm -hmm. the starship is 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 a uh, pushing against space. It, time it's or... you know playing the numbers. You know, yeah, again, it's the mathematics it, it... of it. Yeah, obviously, we can't experiment. Right. <laughs> These are all mental experiments, armchair experiments that you would sit and think about. And that's that's what Einstein was all about, really. Is he he did he was all about his thought experiments. Because and, you got to look at it this way. Say, for example, you know, when we're on when when we're on the Earth, right, and we sit there, and, you know, and we're <laughs> traveling into the future at one second at a time at the speed of regular time, we don't see the big picture, but then, you know, we send an astronaut up into orbit for a week and he comes back down and his watch is almost a second behind ours. Yes. And that's the, that's the, that's how we know that relatively has been proven mm -hmm. by experiment. We've done concrete experiments with that also with time with, watching the clocks and everything to prove mm -hmm. that this effect does occur. So we need to understand before continuing that this isn't, <laughs> this isn't trying to split up space and time. It's like when I was presenting the infinity stones on my show a couple of nights ago, it, it's space time mathematically and scientifically the community as a whole the scientific community as a whole has acknowledged that space time is one entity. It's one figure. It's one expression. I've it's absolutely seen no question on that matter. Yeah. That, that's definitely something that is universally agreed upon mm -hmm. by scientists for sure. And I want to also say hello to the comic relief crusader. Hey Mike, how you doing yeah. bud? Uh, he said he's going to be having his uh, two year youtube anniversary stream later day at around oh three that's right yeah and i i will see if i can make that or not i that's cool that is really great <laughs> oh, <Sean Carter's laughs> is careful, Tony. you don't want to risk getting anything incorrect about time travel no thankfully the well, keepers of the gate are at the gate um so i'm not too worried about that everybody will be fine 
everybody's going to be perfectly fine. We're here to have fun. We're here to discuss concepts outside of that domain. And so we don't, we don't have to worry about whether or mm -hmm. not space, space time is a thing. I definitely agree with that. So I'm mm -hmm. with you there. Anybody who questions that is questioning the nature of reality itself. So mm -hmm. how, it, and which is also what we're here for. So I don't mind if somebody wants to question that, but they'd need to have some pretty logical reasoning, which I haven't seen. And so Pleasant Valley Picker says cats will prevent warp drive from ever happening. <laughs> cats also hide from xenomorphs as they gore crewmen in a dark uh, passageway in starships. No, and, and I, I think I also saw an ancient, I don't know, it was an ancient tablet or something. <laughs> Some scientist was trying to do something and a cat walked across it and it was imprinted into that tablet. Of course. Because the cats do not care. <laughs> but yes, uh, now that we've established that that's how the Federation likes to uh, make things go really, really fast. It's time to break away from the concept of our plane of existence entirety and discuss how the hyperdrive works in the Star Wars universe. Unless you have any uh, other questions about Oh, I did have just one more. technologies uh, like like what the is the, the difference between subspace and and space time. Uh subspace is often referred to as a fold or an ether that exists just slightly above or slightly below our reality to to travel upon to get over the parameters that the speed of light and relativity and general space-time physics would inhibit so it's like you know within the star wars the hyperdrive the hyperspace and then similar same thing you know mm -hmm. it, they 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 will travel relative to the physical locations of our reality in a plane of existence that is not hindered by the laws of space-time so they're able to hyperdrive they're able to literally just go okay point a point b click and you know it's kind of like with stargate wormhole physics but more free range more liberating and you got to remember that this is coming from somebody whose medium was not hey let's discuss the intricate science of our devices but more of uh more fantasy and the, make yeah it, because uh, star wars is more like opera. king arthur in space mm -hmm. <laughs> samurai story technically jedi or samurai and oh, uh, yeah okay it's like, it's like the west i can see the east because like if you look at han solo he's obviously the you know the cowboy you know the the rogue the outlaw canadian spider-man has a question how can mm -hmm. we reconcile the idea that if we could travel to the past how come we don't see time travels and travelers now arriving from the future no way they could be that discreet different timeline created and yeah that that's really what i think is that you cannot change the past and so it, the universe will defend against the paradoxes in some way to prevent that kind of thing from occurring well let's just let's just let's just pop this bubble while we're here and and i'll answer it Temporal displacement into the past and a location like ours that is in our locality. Okay. When I mentioned that starships are literally traveling into the future by our perspective, because they're traveling that much closer to light or into the, into our, into they're experiencing time at their relative past. We are continuously going into the future because their time is dilated to their relative speed. When they stop close to a large mass, then their relative time is still the same. But because now the fold of space time is going to be much more mathematically dense for them, it allows us and our leg room the rest of the universe to catch up 
Temporal displacement is observational. It's not displacement. It's just a perspective from one observer to another. And it's over such vast distances that there is no interaction whatsoever that could cause causality issues, continuum shifts, or phenomena intervention. So I wouldn't bank on somebody going into the past to bet on a horse race. Uh, we will see warp drives long before we see that. Yeah, def <laughs> definitely. Uh, Biff's almanac is useless. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dan Man Walking says, thank you for those gracious comments, Jill. It's people like you and the people being there that make it so much fun. Exactly. It, it's the uh, people we hang out with that makes all of this worth it. And Canadian Spider-Man says, please share this stream, folks, and get some of your cool friends in here to discuss this with, with us. <laughs> but not if your friends are jerks. <laughs> Sharing now, Jill. Thank you so much, Canadian Spider-Man. I appreciate that. Today, and hello to Matt G. Hello, and, Matt G. Uh, How you doing today? Darius Munchausen says, signals are generally sent through subspace. Yes. Mm, Regular space isn't good enough. <laughs> nope. Space-time is the established scientific status quo for our existence. You cannot have one without the other, and it is a wrinkled piece of, of aluminum foil where there are dips and bends and, and based on motion throughout perspectives, angles, and viewpoints change by default. Yeah, and, and it is it is unpacking this kind of reality that we're not uh, capable of visiting at this moment that makes this such a such a topic that is something that we can't we can't really we can fathom it but we can't really experience it and that's what makes it so fascinating to me. It is the unexplored that excites. It's the prospect of. Of getting out there, <laughs> Frank Walker. I don't so obsessed with it. I don't question reality; it just confuses me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. That's why I want to know more. Would you like to know more? Do, do, do. What? What's the difference between a citizen and a civilian? Okay, that's. <laughs> 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 well. Yeah, no, that's one of my favorite movies. I've got to cover it sooner or later because it's kind of like it's like the anti Star Trek movie. It's it's a mm -hmm. it's a parody of what it is supporting, mm -hmm. and it is so cool. It's such a such a great time. If we're using space, if we are folding space or using wormholes, means that we don't have to contend with crushing gravity forces is experience with great speeds correct but you got to remember within a vacuum and if you're in a pressurized capsule uh some of these speeds are not going to be that much of an issue so long as you are fixated to your seat when you are traveling which is another reason why a lot of uh science fiction stories often will have their crews within stasis pods while they're traveling at immense uh, speed um, mm -hmm. to ensure that they are in a fixed position. Because, again, it's not like, uh, you know, you're going to just have an abrupt stop. If you were to have an abrupt stop, that would be horrifying. Um, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. Well, if you... Okay, so if you're in a capsule, you don't want to stop abruptly, is what you're no. saying. No, no. Hello to Edge of Time, Captain Finity. And... But you have to you have to look at it from this perspective. You notice like mm -hmm. uh, rotational physics. This is something that's actually been proven as well. Like your centrifugal force, you know, of of a rotational ship, you can easily emulate gravity by spinning your Dyson tube or you know or or your capsule at the rate of nine point eight meters a second. And that would keep crew people's feet on the ground or on the floor. 
And oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's why we don't have floating astronauts in Star Trek, usually, unless they well, turn off the gravity. Floating astronauts in Star Trek, uh, it varies depending on what movie or what episode, and also, uh, artificial gravity is a thing that that that's its own can of worms. So you know, again. You're talking about a ship that has a computer that does the following. Uh, capable of rematerializing stored matter from a data transference to create food, parts, and parcel. The ability to calculate the immense numbers it would need to travel through warp and come out of warp and travel through warp and come out of warp to be able to reach a star base within the same amount of relative space time between both the occupants and viewers on opposite sides of the galaxy. Uh, it's also a ship that is capable of doing this while having its own artificial gravity well to keep people's feet on the floor. Capable of creating light mass weaponry at, you know, God knows what thermal numbers, God knows how many megajoules just for combat. Has a series and layers of shields that are capable of doing multiple things, including but not excluding to being able to deflect against weapons of a similar caliber handling space debris, and being able to navigate through space. Yes, because once you've figured out warp travel, then you know <laughs> that everybody else is going to want to play too. And that's where you start making <laughs> the weapons and the shields. So this is all in one computer. This is a ship's computer. This isn't a Starbase's computer. This isn't, this isn't the home office back on Earth. This is on every single starship they have this ability to have they have this computer that 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 is basically one big cray one big nasa cray of nasa crays and a quantum field in itself to be able to handle all these immense calculations it's insane mm -hmm. when you sit and think about it okay it's, definitely it's, <laughs> hello it's computer really it's a computer literally capable of creating hard light platforms in a closed simulator. Well, and now you're talking about <laughs> holodecks. Yes, it's all in the how did you get? Computer. How did you get there? That's amazing. <laughs> but I'm what I'm saying is, is that computer is doing all of that. Mm -hmm. It's not just calculating warp jumps. It's not just being able to fire hard light mass. It's not just capable of replicating food. It has. The ability to project hard light versions of pocket dimensions at the whimsy of its crew without breaking a sweat, without burning a hard drive. I can't wait. Pleasant Valley Picker CA says, <laughs> well, Farscape used wormholes to travel. And yeah. yeah, so that is a little more confining, as mm -hmm. as Tony was saying. You're but wormholes are the safest restricted. measure. Which we'll get to after we get we're, we need to get into the hyperdrive a little bit more, but I feel like the hyperdrive is already on the way to the wormholes because I said I put that in the middle simply because hyperdrives uses the concepts that we get from wormhole travel and wormhole physics uh, to avoid all of the consequences of universal space time issues. Yeah, that definitely does that definitely does mm -hmm. avoid that kind of thing if you're able if, if you're able to enter a wormhole and survive, which is the thing we haven't exactly tested. Ah, uh, <laughs> you change your name a lot, Fiona. At 153 p.m. Oh, Fiona's here. Yeah, yes. Yes, I want to pick your brain cuz you are a physicist. Yes, she is. Yes. But We'll get to that one in just a moment. I I wanted to <laughs> wanted to read this one. Um, Dadman Walking says, "Back from call, saw something about speed. What about ludicrous speed? Ludicrous speed, go!" And Lemon Pie says, "Dadman, apparently that is safe as long as you put uh, on a seatbelt." Working on it. Oh, is everything okay? Do you yeah, I'm working on it. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect on my on my thing, okay? Okay, understood. I've got I've got it all covered. So, be back when you can. You bet. Great. And, and I'm really glad everybody's here to learn to just it, 
this this is mostly a uh, stream just for fun obviously right now we cannot travel at warp <laughs> we are far from being even close to, we can't even create a a starship that can travel close to the speed of light yet let alone let alone the freaking warp travel so we've got to get there first we've got to Quit being afraid of making a giant starship that can use nuclear power to travel through space because th that is really the first step to actually get out there and start exploring it with the technology that we currently have in reality. When we don't do that, then we don't have we don't stand a chance to ever actually put any physicality to the mathematical equations that have been done to make warp travel a possibility, at least in the minds of physicists, many physicists who have seen it possible in, in their equations. Pleasant Valley Picker says they use, Farscape uses wormholes. Yes, that is, that is true. I miss Farscape. I need to go rewatch that one. So yes. And I, of course I do, I do appreciate this kind mm. of thing this okay am I, is everybody still able to hear me um uh, yeah we can on, still my, hear you. on my hotspot now so everything should be okay yes okay testing, good testing one two three four five six all right yes Magnificent. please don't sip coffee through your helmet wait what oh he's uh doing the space balls gag <laughs> oh <laughs> if, if i were an astronaut i would want coffee in my suit why wouldn't i Lemon Pie says, are the Borg transwarp corridors simply wormholes or something else? Yeah, my computer my computer automatically hooked up to the wrong internet. And uh, I had my hotspot on, but I guess it just connected to the other internet. But now it's been forgotten. Oh, I wondered why everything was so perfect. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, am I, am I coming through or is everything Yeah, okay? you are. You know, you sound fine. I was just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, is everything okay in terms of that? Uh, yes, yes, everything's yes, fine yes, now. Yes, uh, I just told my computer forget the old uh, connection and because uh, I, mm -hmm. I I had I had my hotspot on, so I don't know. Anyway, right, um, it, it 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 wanted the Wi-Fi over the hotspot. I mean, I did. mean, I know, I know the mm -hmm. the phone generates mm -hmm. the illusion of the Wi-Fi, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, Lemon Pie asks a question. Are Borg transwarp corridors simply wormholes or something else? Uh, transwarp and is is a very odd, uh, even for me to try and put this into numbers. Transwarp is kind of odd because what they're trying to do with the Borg to make them more computer like is give them a point recall save system for their cubes to travel through. Yeah, so and, like and these, point for and me, these feels like artificial wormholes, maybe? Yes. Uh, yes. Instead of a fixed wormhole that travels, you know, that, that, that can be used as a highway, they're literally folding space in a fashion like and creating a wormhole from one point to another, which is the reason why Borg ships are always faster. If whenever they say, Oh yeah, they're here first. Cause they're faster. You know? Yeah. So. And they, I guess this is something I need to rewatch Voyager for, because I know that this mm -hmm. trans warp Voyager has thing. a similar drive, the slip speed stream drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, well the slipstream that, that comes in mm -hmm. the episode where we get to see Andy Dick and mm. <laughs> and the doctor travels travels to the to that to the new starship that has a slipstream drive and they save they save the ship against the Romulans. That's a lot of fun. What is that message in a bottle? I think the name of the mm -hmm. episode. It's a lot of, that and slipstream. Do you want to discuss that? Again, those are some ridiculous numbers, but we could. I mean, mm -hmm. Slipstream is simply taking some of the aspects of wormhole spatial folding and adding it to traditional warp. 
to allow it to traverse relatively faster speeds, relatively longer distances, and relatively shorter time. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, the my goodness. general I, overview of it. That's. That, I have to say hello and welcome to Retro Nerd Girl. I am so incredibly excited to see, to see you. you here in the chat. She's listening while doing chores. Great topic, by welcome, the way. Thank welcome. you. And it's it's a difficult topic for me, be, uh, not actually being a, a real, like I, I'm a computer scientist, but I'm not a real scientist. Hello? I just, oh, hello? Can you hear me? Uh, can anybody hear me in the chat? Can you hear I me? I am. Jill. Yeah, I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Uh, well, now I can hear you. Oh, yeah. you can. Okay, great. And and so I am I am just a I'm a fan of this kind of stuff, and I want to learn more. And Tony is here to help provide some perspective on it. Chrono says Bork has secret ways of getting around. Mm -hmm. Wait, who's Bork? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, retro. Cinema I think he's talking about the oh, Borg. Hey. Oh, oh, Borg. <laughs> I am oh. on a cellular device and will be for the foreseeable future as I seek uh, my own internet service provider. Yeah, you need to get a new internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And hello to Ben from Cinema Gulp. It, if you have any issues, please let me know if you can hear. But I do I don't appreciate I don't mind because I like your your little intercom your star trek intercom sound that is, that is oh cool. the the yes. <laughs> you can do that anytime that makes me happy After on deck. i'm not sold on dark matter it's not my specialty but still seems like cheating lots of physicists don't buy into dark matter it's a cheat dark matter if you were to give if i could give my opinion on dark matter it's like I, when Einstein asked his father, what is algebra? And he said, uh, it's lazy man's math. Um, dark matter is just a variable for variable's sake. Uh, oh, look at all this empty space. How are we going to make the numbers equitable? Well, just put some unknown mass in there and uh, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> so I, I am on the side with Prince, Princess Fiona on this. Um, dark matter really is uh, an exploit not really a cheat more like an exploit or, or a, a crutch as it were um for figuring out it, long it, yeah well they use dark matter because they don't know what it is mm -hmm. so it being ignorant thus ignorant of something that they can see the effects of mm -hmm. they just ascribe a name to it mm-hmm Chronos says he misses the Muppet Show. <laughs> Chronos misses the Muppet Show. Eggs oh. in space. How did, how did that even become a topic? <laughs> That's funny. See, it, it, there's Princess Fiona's just confirming what I said. It it really is just a variable. Put a variable there. Hey, Princess Fiona what, says, what, "Sounds what, like we're on what, X. X is dark matter. Okay, what well, X is here now." <laughs> I thought I thought filament stand dark matter were two different things. Am I wrong? I wouldn't be surprised. Filaments and dark matter were two different things. Mm, filaments uh, can often be uh, compared to uh, the fabric of space time more than dark matter, but uh, it, it, they they use it for both. I'm not gonna lie about that they they, they yeah. it's it, it, it's a mishmash yeah filaments are supposedly comprised of gravity and dark matter right says princess yep pansanora right right <laughs> all right can you hear me a little better now perfect perfect yeah i yeah. can hear you you were perfect <laughs> earlier but you're just fine now dark matter is a concept to make the math work yep in space, which just it works if that followed with Princess Princess Pan Pan Sonorov's comment. But getting into the hyperdrive, um, uh, Scotty R thirty seven, getting into the hyperdrive. 
uh, the hyperdrive, as I said before, it, it uses the universe just above ours. It's like a reality just above ours to get out of the FTL requirements of our own space time. And uh, yeah, that's the, the short end of it. That's the short end of it. That's the gist of it. Princess. Hey, um, Sheep Herder, yeah, Princess. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Hello to Disney Sheep Herder. Hey, he said he's been wanting to see if he could catch my show live. So I'm glad you're here today. Mm -hmm. Princess Pansonorov says Rel relativistic rel relativist effects are dependent. Inertial, on frames in inertial frames of reference. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Let me read this one, Tony. Relativist effects are dependent on inertial frames of reference, so no practical applications are possible. Correct. And gravitational effects, however, are provided for very interesting cat uh, possibilities. Yes, catapults, um, the, you know, catapults being one of the, you know, more conventional methods that we have available to us. We can easily catapult ourselves. If we wanted to, like, you know, the Jovian catapult, being able to slingshot off of something with a higher uh, state of gravity to achieve speeds uh, from one position to another. However, it is still very much restricted into our own star system because we do not have any significant celestial bodies available to us for approximately 4.3 uh, light years. Um, so... Well, it does allow. We're out in the boondocks over here. Uh, yeah, what? Well, yeah, sector thirteen, as it were. You know, so it's kind of difficult to to really utilize catapult physics and gravity physics in a way that uh, can get us between one star system and another. But uh, for here in our own little sandbox, it's perfectly fine, and uh, it's actually uh, you know the driving force between all of our, uh, you know, space missions that we've had so far, you know, especially to the moon and, or, you know, probes or, you know, they'll slingshot off of one gas giant to another, you know, the, you know, the Galileo project, you know, would well, right. That is, that is how we do real life space travel today. Mm hmm. You know, you got those close flybys, and they go, well, how do we get to Neptune before this battery goes out? Oh, well, just uh, fly a little closer to Jupiter, and it'll give us a little push. Although I'm kind of glad we don't have things that are too massive hanging around. If, if we were close to a black hole, I'd be a little bit nervous. Well... Even if it would give us more possibilities. The thing is, is if a black hole, neutron star, or anything of that caliber were ever... Not even in our backyard, but in our in our city block, the GRBs would uh, make sure that we wouldn't know that it's nearby. Uh, you know, the, just the, the plumes of GRBs that would come off of a, a you know black hole, or or you know, especially if there's a quasar and it just happens to like you know throw its jet of Hawking radiation in our face, or you know, if it's a neutron star and it throws you know a GRB our way, you know, there's. Are you talking about gamma rays? Yes, gamma ray bursts. Could you know microwave us right and proper? You know, if we had any of those high dollar <laughs> celestial objects, as it were. Sorry, Tony sounds like velvet boxers. Comfy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Scotty. And a uh, Scotty R thirty seven also says ADH drive. ADHD drive. <laughs> we have been getting off topic like we've got ADHD today, that's for sure. Um, no, I'm totally fine fun. with that. We're having fun. We're having fun. Oh, okay. No, I, I haven't noticed that whatsoever. I think we're getting into all of the right topics. Mm -hmm. And if we want to talk yeah, about yeah, realistic the flow of conversation. space travel, that might be even that might be even more fun because the those are the types of things that we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And like how we finally visited Pluto after all this time, just because the experiment for it happened a long time ago. And mm -hmm. it, even if we wouldn't have started that experiment today, I'm glad we did finally get there. Better uh, late than ever. Hey. <laughs> right. Hi, Jill, in chat. Hello to Herc 130. Mm hmm. 
So lots of bikes connected to a warp to make it go. <laughs> you know, for 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 the Titan <laughs> known as Kronos to 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 you know say these things is hilarious. Yeah, it is. Pleasant Valley Picker CA says, "I'm so glad you guys are not discussing Mushroom Drive. That's because that is completely preposterous and not in the realm of any sort of reality. Because the concept of mushrooms in general is a very <laughs> organic." thing that occurs on earth under the ground <laughs> under the trees and the only the really cool thing about mushrooms is that they can come together and sort of behave like colony creatures which are have become one of my favorite kind of things and so they can they can almost think they can almost have some kind of Jill is very much a spangler. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that if I were ever to, you know, visit antiderivative Jill, she would have a shelf of spores, molds, and fungus. <laughs> I, he's my favorite character <laughs> and, um, in Ghostbusters, so I don't doubt you. <laughs> and anyway, though, but uh, having them in space to travel, what? <laughs> I don't know. There, there's a reason why. Star Trek after 2005 is not my favorite thing. Princess Panzeronoff says, Space is super empty, as one of my old professors used to say. Mm -hmm. It is and very that, empty. It is space. And that calls to you explaining how we're pretty kind of lonely in our little solar system. Mm -hmm. with our, with our, we have our asteroid belt, so we've got lots of that to explore. And another thing that a lot of people, you know, whenever you see like alien ships and, you know, the you know UFOs or UAPs, whatever they want to call them now, and everybody wants to change stuff that's been established for no other reason than just to change it. You know, uh, you think you see how a ship like that will, you know, you see it silently hovering, there's no sound or whatever, and then it just darts off, you know, it, it, it's, you know super luminous speed to the point to where it's like oh well you see a little trail of light but it's gone kind of like how how ships in star trek will do the little stretch before poofing yeah into the distance that's that's in the thumbnail for this this stream. yeah and, and so you know you think you think okay these guys have got it figured out but if and and follow me here if it is spatial folding like as nasa suggesting with its you know wrap drive not its warp drive it's wrap drive where it's literally you know it's the albuquerque wrap drive and uh it's it's a very uh awesome concept because it's rather than exceeding the speed of light within a local reference frame or inertial frame the craft would traverse distances by contacting space in front of it and expanding space behind it or contracting space in front of it Resulting like in the effect kind of FPL. Yeah, it's kind of, it's bending it. It's like, you know, because like how you take a napkin and you, you go, okay, well, here's point A and here's point B. And I'm just going to fold the napkin and have those two touch. Oh, okay. So it's like yeah. wormhole physics, it, but with a, you know, artificial wormhole-ish. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, still, it's still, yeah, it's. Stargate is a fixed wormhole. There is a difference. We'll get to that in a minute. All right. It says objects cannot accelerate to the speed of light within normal space time. Instead, the Albuquerque drive shifts space around an object so that the object would arrive at its destination FTL and it would in normal space without breaking any physics laws. Uh, but the thing is, is it's breaking physics laws in, in a way that... Uh, that yeah, you know, so this yeah. one is breaking the laws of physics. It, well, the thing is, is to compress space like that is it, it means that you are playing with forces akin to a singularity or a point of artificial gravity to cause space time to compress so does that mean any such ship that could actually achieve that would have to be extremely massive yeah, and yeah and yeah i'm car to chev massive like you know, the car to ship scale, you know, type one, type two, type three civilization scale. You know, you would have to have a Karadashev type, probably even more than type 
three. Like you would have to. It's like you would have hey, to wait, have something what that's is harnessing Karadishev? a black hole. You have to have Karadishev something. That, yeah. Is, what is that? Uh, th we uh, there there is a level of civilization, and the Karadishev scale is the scale of civilizations that have achieved. Uh, milestones of their development. The first being uh, the Karadashev uh, Mark I, the Type I civilization, which is a civilization that has harnessed their planet in its entirety. Like, any power output, any resource, they have, you know, they can control their own weather. They can control their, their planetary thermal dynamics. They can control the EM field of their planet. They are a civilization that has harnessed the power of their planet in an entirety. Okay, at Kardashev oh, Type so, 2. Oh, so, wow. Is <laughs> That's already way beyond us. We cannot yeah. control our weather. Right, right. At Kardashev Type 2 is a civilization that has harnessed the power of their parent star to its, to its entirety. As in, their parent star is being utilized to the optimum efficiency of being harnessed for the civilization we can't even replicate our star yeah, yeah. Fusion yet yeah imagine having like a massive dyson accumulator just parked around your star just absorbing every ounce of its energy and compressing oh, it so a dyson sphere is an example of a, a type type two, two yeah yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's. Princess cool. Pansanov at two sixteen p.m. says that there's also an inertialist drive. Remove inertia, and laws of physics no longer apply. Yes, uh, absolute speed, which is a thesis that that uses that concept as well, and uh, we're, we'll be getting to, into that here in about ten minutes because it's all you know got about half an hour. And I, I, I think we've made really good work. use of that time. I am having oh, an yeah. incredible time talking about these different mm -hmm. types of travel and th not just that but the actual civilizations that make those that this kind of travel possible mm -hmm. would make it possible if if such civilizations do exist and if they are creating dyson spheres which i think are really cool and also reminded me of one of my favorite star trek the next generation episodes with scotty montgomery scott mm -hmm. visiting the enterprise d in the episode relics in mm -hmm. which we do get to see such a dyson sphere on a on a surface base level we don't really get to explore it as much as i would have liked but it was so cool to see one on star trek mm -hmm. and but, oh and i wanted to say hello to dalek 451 he says he's hope, in a bad mood i'm so sorry to hear that i hope your day gets better i hope you get to and, feeling better buddy oh and and uh Princess Panzanorov says, mm -hmm. I told Scotty, I like the idea of ADHD drive. Sounds practical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she also says, the mushroom drive, we know what the filth writers were on when they were coming up with that garbage. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but really what, what it was is they were also not only not only coming up with nonsense, but also stealing uh, the ideas from a fantasy-based science writer, uh, Anas Abdeen, who does pixel art, and he was trying to create a video game. Mm -hmm. And and so they were trying to take elements from something that is not Star Trek and just trying to smash it into Star Trek, and it was just not a good idea. And it was plagiarism that will never be that will never be called upon. He lost his case on that, unfortunately. Mushrooms are tasty as food, but powering a starship, no. And Lemon Pie says, of course it's possible. I just don't think it's big <laughs> is a strong argument for there being other intelligent life in space. I I do. It, because if there isn't, it's an awful waste of space. If you well, want to know from a we have, contact. We have only to look movies. at the uh, Fermi paradox. We only have to look at that equation to go, okay, well, if all of these factors are scratching the surface, you know, 
of so many stars. There's so many planets. There's so many planets. There's so many, uh, you know, the variables as to what could have a civilization on it. And it exponentially increases as we discover more. The Fermi paradox. Yeah, there's, a, you know? there's a whole yeah. equation for that. It is, yeah. It's the Drake equation, right? Yeah, the Drake equation. And so it's like, uh, you know, skeptics in the scientific community often, you know, anchor themselves to it. And some of them, uh, you know, without proper, you know, acknowledgement of it, often straw man it in their arguments to, uh, okay, well, there is no, if there are aliens, where are they? You know, like they don't, they, they, they close themselves off to it. To Yeah. I, I can't, I leave myself open to the possibility, but when right. people say they're here now, then let's go get a coffee. I'd like to meet right. you. Right. <laughs> Mark Hartness says that they have a Stark uh, vacuum sales uh, company where he lives. Nice. Um, That's great. Wow, this chat really got away from me. Wow, uh, I, I am uh, just so happy you guys are all here. Uh, yeah, and I've been, I've been, I've been looking and and you know keeping up with you know points that are being made directly to the conversation for you. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Canadian Spider Man says the reason why I like Enterprise other other than Scott Bakula was that the tech they mm -hmm. were using is maybe doable today. Yes, and that's because they had to take a step down from the TOS because Enterprise actually had respect for the original series, so they took steps down from the original series technology to make sure that they seemed as if they were a hundred years behind at least. And that's what's wonderful about that show. Mega Cropper, if you want entertainment that. in the form of comedy, my friend, I uh, will be doing it after Friday Night Frolics, after work, after party stream um, on my show later on tonight. Uh, when yes, I absolutely. It. So, so um, what's going to happen today? I think we have our whole day planned out. Whatever Friday you guys want to have is up to you, mm -hmm. but... After this stream, of course, we're going to, or during this stream, Comic Relief Crusader is celebrating his, his, uh, what is he? Yeah, and he'll be on at three. And he's, he's celebrating um, something. What funny. is he celebrating? I forget. Mm. Two years. Two year it's anniversary. Two year anniversary. Mm. There yeah. it is. I had it somewhere in my brain. But also hello to Don Don Ranger Power. And after that, Good of course, we have Doomcock's Friday Night Frolics. And after that, we have Tony's Stark of Iron. So if you want to find Tony, go to Stark of Iron. It's easier to find now. If you type in Stark of Iron, you will find his channel. And I'm so glad it's searchable now because when you were just Tony Stark, your channel was not searchable. So that was a good move. One second. People and are saying, I have a channel. And I go, yeah, I have a channel. Check it yeah, out. Yeah, put your channel in. Chrono says, rats are cute that don't carry the fleas that carry the plague. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. There we and go. And the princess says, there's also an inertialist drive. Mm -hmm. Remove inertia. And the laws of physics no longer apply. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. She's getting into Q-level manipulation of physics. Well, that's, that's where absolute speed comes in. But uh, I'm going to... I'm going to... Be right back, okay? Okay. So, I want to hear more about what Princess Fiona is talking about. I mean, Princess Pan, Panzanaruf is talking about. <laughs> Nurk 130 says, I can only harness the power of a good nap. Yeah, me too. That is, I'm only in control of my consciousness as well, which is why we're here, is to share our consciousness. We are, are well, Carl Sagan likes to say, we are the universe who gets to know itself. And so that's what that's what we're doing today. Don Don Ranger Power says, when I first heard of flying cars, I have thought I thought of the Jetsons. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I have a poll. I have a poll in the chat. What should our next science show cover? And I thought that maybe I would have this poll as soon as Tony mentioned a uh, science that was interesting to me. And so next time, it looks like we're probably going to be talking about artificial gravity because um, I put the choice between artificial gravity and flying cars part two because we by no means even scratch the surface of flying cars. But artificial gravity would be so cool because that does beat it into what, it, what could be helpful in surviving in space 
if we do want to make those multi-generational ships that are possible to create today. And so Cronus says, looks like I picked the wrong time to stop sniffing glue. Well, that's another way to go to the moon that I do not recommend. Okay, I return. Okay, I welcome back. Pleasant Valley Picker CA says, it's a very interesting stream. Just wish I understood more of it, though. Well, you and me both. And I do my best to understand everything I can and pick up wherever my consciousness allows me to I, I do comprehend. my best to try to explain this in a fashion to where everybody can get a general oh, yeah. grasp. I know. That is why we're having such a good time. Princess Panzan Panzanara says a fleck of paint at 35,000 kph can blast a hole a foot mm. wide in an inch of steel imagine a speck of dust going at near the speed of light the yep. energy would be on the scale of a stellar explosion so in in the vein of actually having warp drive how do you handle this truth well hopefully the spatial folding drive and fixed wormholes would eliminate the, the need of uh, having to have a metal or a shield system designed to be able to take hits casually from every, you know, penny size speck of space debris. But you also have to consider the notion that if you're, especially if you're using a drive that's inertial, as you, uh, you know, get faster and faster and you start traveling faster and faster. You, uh, your mass, your relative mass becomes closer and closer to infinite. You, you know, you, you are providing enough potential and kinetic energy to be able to withstand some of the, you know, small objects out there, but you would still need, you know, a hull strength and a shield strength comparable to supernova if you wanted to really bridge the gap and what does it mean to have the shield strength of a supernova as in being able to withstand a supernova equitable to a supernova like oh, in God. the face. okay yeah that's pretty strong okay <laughs> like <laughs> you would have to have something literally blowing up in your face and it would have to be a and a good pair of glasses and a good pair of glasses and plenty of sunscreen um <laughs> Corona says thought it was a vacuum company oh dyson oh dyson mm -hmm. <laughs> dyson mm -hmm. has fears <laughs> franco walker says i went to a stunt show in the 70s so whenever i hear flying cars i think i've seen it it looks dangerous and stupid so that's because of my my poll that says what our next stream should be is mm -hmm. the second part of flying cars or artificial gravity artificial gravity is winning and i'm excited about that so that could be something for later Mm -hmm. Well, you got to look at it in this way. Artificial gravity is a concept that's a little bit more difficult now, simply because gravity is now acknowledged as more of a mathematical expression of relative space time per mass. Versus yeah, and we we the can and foundational Einstein's, force of the universe. Exactly, Einstein spent his whole life trying to combine the forces, and he just just couldn't make it for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And you seem to know those reasons. So when we do have that stream, we'll talk more about that. And yeah, to emulate gravity would require inertial designs, you know, rotating tubes at 9.8 <laughs> meters and things of that. And, and, uh, but it's big, right? <laughs> yeah, it's big. No, we're we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Chrono says, my, my brain is like the universe, empty. <laughs> Again, but it's big, right? <laughs> but it's big. And Sean Carter says, just finishing the NX01, one... one one thousandth scale. Mm -hmm. Then I will start the one thirty fifth scale of the Jupiter two for pop culture carrot air. It's mm -hmm. going to have rotating lights, internal lights, and resin figures and tubes. Nice. Wow, that is so awesome! Wow. Everybody, please subscribe to Sean Carter's channel if you want to see more guys, of what he's almost doing. Almost at four hundred. Oh, oh man, that is great. He's gonna, yeah, that's wonderful, and he's going to get to five hundred sooner than you can sneeze that's awesome i see 500 sometime i don't know two three years from now <laughs> i've got a couple of months 
I just I, I grow a lot I'm more plateaued, slow, but I'm not worried about. It. I'm not worried either. We're just here to have fun, and uh, you provided an incredible mini for that. So thank you. Uh, I mean, I provide the mini, but you're providing the actual knowledge, and you, you're the show today. So thank you so much for being here. Princess says it's a numbers game. There is almost certainly life elsewhere. It's almost a certainty. But there is a very good chance they're outside of light cone. Yes, I agree with that. PVP says with millions of planets, there must be some with intelligent life. I doubt we're that special. We're the only planet with life. Yeah, me too. The Drake equation has sort of been debunked. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm sure it's been upgraded. I'd rather call it upgraded rather than debunked. But I would I that that's a good topic too. I need to write that down. And they're dis uh, later on in the chat. Well, they're discovering uh, discussing uh, flying cars, and like I said, whenever I was on part one of that, uh, having a flying car is like having a bad automobile and a bad plane because both of those vehicular concepts require opposing physics to work and you can't have something that's trying to do both. And you'll find you'll have an inferior machine on both aspects. It becomes more of a jack of all trades and design versus, you know, a master of one, which is either, Hey, am I going to be hugging the road? Cause the air is keeping me there or B is the air going to keep me aloft because I am creating lift. And it's mm -hmm. totally two different forms of physics that work against a flying car and the concept of elect, you know, even with like, as I, as I was showing you electrogravitic lifters. You oh, yeah. Lifters. Yeah, you did. You showed me your real experiments that you did on the matter. Yeah. Well, th there was somebody else doing them, but I've conducted similar experiments. Like, you know, I've done uh, hexagonal ones and and uh, multi-layered ones to try to amplify fields but again ionizing air aside you know you know that's small potatoes for something that's made out of balsa wood and aluminum foil being overcharged you know this is a two to three ton vehicle with you know an average passenger total capacity of about a thousand more pounds that you're wanting to put into the air on a projected electrogravity field, it's just not going to happen. Not not with yeah, our current. Yeah, and if you need that field all over the place, then that's a kind of right. massive infrastructure that right. is, is not in our immediate future. No. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is that is a really cool topic. It, Mark Harkness says, in all seriousness, before people ask, why haven't the aliens shown up? Ask, why would they? It's like someone from Kansas saying California doesn't exist because they've never met a Californian. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, well, you, it, there would they would definitely have to have some kind of vested interest to visit us if, they, if they're around because we really are mm. out, out of the way. PVP says, I'm just glad there's no sci-fi show that has a starship powered by sex drive. Yeah, we do. It's called um, Lex. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> James Caserta says, glory to Jill. I'm feeling Klingon today. Sean Carter says, PVP, if that were true, no married starship would ever fly. Ha ha ha. Oh mm. man, but the Orville goes a lot faster than warp drive. So we didn't we didn't even get into the quantum kind of mechanics that Seth MacFarlane imagines for his warp for his kind of travel that that goes so much quicker than um a warp drive ship in Star Trek. Well, I think we should discuss fixed wormholes and then comb over my idea. Okay. Oh yeah, right. We haven't even gotten to your we haven't even gotten to your theory, so let's get to that, definitely. Okay, so we'll just gloss over uh see that is the wrap drive the that we were discussing earlier. Oh it is. So please yeah. read the chat for me. Uh, Sean Carter says, well, a warp drive technically pushes space around the ship, right? So whatever is the space would be warp pushed along the ship as well. Yeah, the wrap drive does that with spatial folding. And, you know, artificial wormholes would also eliminate that, like the Stargate. Uh, the Stargate is 
well, let's just talk about wormholes for a, sec a second. Wormholes do have a natural occurrence environment, and that's uh, in atomics. Uh, a lot of people consider electrons traveling from one position to another on an orbital instantaneously without any measurement of time as an evident phenomenon that wormholes exist between orbitals and electrons in an atom. So one can possibly conjecture a means of fixing a wormhole that would have a diameter much larger than the orbital of an electron to, to be able to act as a stargate. Oh, a fargate! Do you want the guys to get sued at the fargate, Amory? Okay. Yeah, if it was if it was just a subatomical wormhole, that that mm -hmm. is that would only be useful for sending information. Mm -hmm. Which they've done in uh, MIT, and that's you know evidence. Have? To... What? That's the ten. For... Yeah, they, they, they there is there is experiments that have they've sent messages, quote unquote, data, uh, quote unquote, at MIT back like fractions of a second, sometimes a second, uh, in experiments at MIT. That, no kidding. I got to look into that. That I probably That's what wouldn't I understand it if I even last tried. Night, that there might be some possibility to phenomena intervention or continuum shifting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. To say the least. You know. Off and at, um, and so problem. and so your your idea is we just need a little bigger one. <laughs> yeah. Stargates are basically a wormhole between two fixed points in time. So you would have two fixed points in time that would be outside of space time simply because you'd be going in on one side and coming out on the other. It's a fold in space. It's literally the napkin mm -hmm. folded. Now, the problem yes. with stargates or far gates or fixed points in time is exactly that. They are a enter here, exit there function. So it's not going to be as free range as warp drive. But... Right. That You're constrained. Also, that makes sense. It's a more plausible technology because it's safer and because it's more reliable. If we were to able to figure out how to create wormholes, you know, from one ring to another and put them in orbit over planets, obviously you'd have a crew that would go there the conventional way and assemble the exit gate while the crews over our gate would have it finished by then. And then, of course, once the, that gate pings us, and obviously we would have to wait, you know, however many years it would take for that gate to communicate to us, because depending on how fast they're going, then they're, you know, it would be a, a centuries long to, to possibly even a millennia long venture, uh, you know, to set these up. And, yeah, and, and right, and so yeah. that's that's one reality that if we mm -hmm. knew how to make such a wormhole, we could start the process here, send an intergenerational ship over there, and mm -hmm. <laughs> and to create a highway. Mm -hmm. That could be fun. Uh, Charles Strauss has a very interesting form of FTL quantum entangled communications in his book. It's very well thought out. It says Princess Pants and Roth. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. It's actually a really good, uh, really good take on uh, it, it applies to uh, Planck scale vibration and being able to just, you know, skip over a lot of the issues with reality, you know, simply because of quantum resonance and uh, impact. And uh, it's yeah, it's a really good book, a really good series of books, actually. Um but so, uh, oh, Charles, uh, oh, yeah, she says yeah. Charles Strauss has an interesting mm -hmm. form of FTL quantum entangled communication mm -hmm. in his book. It's a lot very of, well uh, thought out. Well, I'm gonna have to buy some books, a lot of subatomic, uh, non locality, uh, going on there. Oh, okay, yes, more mm -hmm. quantum physics. That That is something where I want to go. I want to learn quantum mm -hmm. physics and astrology. and uh, Not astrology, astronomy. Astrology is stupid. <laughs> 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 Sorry for all of the people who love astrology out there. I shouldn't have said that. Well, I'm an Aries. I don't believe in anything. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Sagittarius. I'll still, I, I still, I'll still have fun. Oh, no, no, Sagittarius. Yeah, that's the question. I was pointing a quote it's just like i don't believe in astrology i'm a sagittarius we don't believe in anything it's a quote it's not mine um okay but yeah um 
We've got about five minutes-ish, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start wrapping up my presentation okay. with my thesis. And, okay, great. Uh, this is a concept that I like to call absolute speed, and it definitely uses an inertialess uh, form of uh, stasis, yeah, I would like to call it. Uh, Futurama often references inertialess drives with its dark matter engine uh, using Nibbler's poopy as fuel uh, to allow the uh, universe to uh, travel around you while you stay relatively still or perfectly still. Um, uh, if there was one place in the universe, this is just a conceptual theory. This has no real backing. It has some numbers to it. I'm currently working on the proofs for it, for correlative data before I even put it in for peer review. Uh, this is just an armchair, shower thought, shitter thought, and I have the maturity to say, hey, this is a shitter thought, you know. But absolute zero, the temperature is zero K, the point in which even atomic energy and movement stops, is mm -hmm. very difficult to achieve in the natural spectrum of space. We can't even artificially recreate it. But I think about the thermodynamics of the system and all of the heat exiting the system, and I'm thinking of something like the Big Bang here, right? Now, if there was one location in the natural universe that would have absolute zero temperatures, it would be the physical center of it, because all of the energy of the Big Bang is by default away from it. And since the universe is expanding away from that center can also be considered, well, if it's at absolute zero temperature, then it's not resonating on the Planck scale. It's not causing those vibrations to create its relative space-time and therefore its gravity, quote-unquote, uh, mathematically speaking. So if you were well, to well, wrap wait, your... Wait, why would a lack of heat keep you away from... It's a molecular motion. It's matter. your molecular motion. It's your atomic motion. Because zero case even stops your atomic motion, which causes okay. you to not ripple yourself across the fabric of space time, allowing space time to now act like water over you and you're just sediment on the bedrock and it's flowing. Okay, over so you. somebody traveling this way, they would be they would be frozen. They would have to wrap though. themselves in a field that would be at zero K. And then the universe would ignore them, is basically where I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It'd be yeah. like they're almost like they're they're stationary. Yeah, they would be. Now this would be a form of traveling. Yeah, inertialess travel. But yeah. but you you couldn't experience the time the no. travel yourself. You, no, you just wake up and you're just like, oh, okay, I guess we're here. Yeah, and and again, this is obviously a shower thought, a shitter thought. It's not, you know, and I, you know, I'm tinkering around with the numbers a little bit and, it, you know, it's an idea. It's an idea. Yeah, and Princess Fiona says thermodynamics, the ultimate party pooper. Isn't it that the truth, though? <laughs> uh, I chose I chose the shitter thought wisely. Um, <laughs> and uh, Christian Fandom Geek says, how would this work, though? Yeah, nobody's ever going to achieve absolute zero K to find out. So it's fine. <laughs> hey well that's still a very interesting theory that would be that would make a really great science fiction story that mm -hmm. i want to hear so i appreciate you bringing it up and mm -hmm. and the concept of it i do i do realize uh when i when i talk about this stuff uh, that i am not qualified but hold on just a moment here i have something mm -hmm. where is it there it is Okay, so, of course, I do realize, generally speaking, all this warp drive and FDL travel in general is a plot device to use to make science fiction more fun and to allow for the starship to travel vast distances very quickly. So that I know that, in principle, it is used as a fantasy device for something mm -hmm. that currently cannot really happen. However, for me, and clearly for actual scientists, it is fun to imagine that we can and to try to come up with some evidence why it could be possible, which is why so many have done the math on it. And I think it's really cool that this sort of research is attempted, whether or not it really pans out anytime soon. <laughs> so I, I'm happy about it. And and that kind of theory is what 
keeps that kind of imagination alive that could actually see come to something Princess one day. Kanzarov says uh, with the very like zero K would it also allow for the jumping of energy states from tach Tardians to Tachyons. Absolutely. You see where I'm coming from with this. It, 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 it would suspend you from a lot, if not all of the requirements of the physical universe and space time. You know, you know, the speed of light be damned. The the speed of the expansion of the universe. Again, it takes a light particle eight minutes to go from the sun to the earth, but the Milky Way, the Milky Way rotates that distance in you know in spades in a day. You know, it's you know, you take the grand scale of the universe and you're able to now let it just whiz past you as you are somehow mathematically stable and in one point. Because, you know, you've anchored yourself there. You're and also then, a popsicle, yeah. so make sure to wear a jacket. Yes, bring a towel. Um, so, you know. But anyway, it is about time for me to go. Yeah. Um, I will be having a post-FNF party tonight where uh, I'll be singing songs, doing routines, taking requests. Is it okay if I post my PayPal here as well? Uh, you may. I you have I a do. you have a wrench. Feel free. I know, I know, but I don't want to. Thank you for asking. E-bag. I, I don't want to be that. considered e-bagging, but mm -hmm. I do need a new internet uh, source, and any and all help would be appreciated. I do take donations on my late from New York shows, and um, you know, I do hope you get that new internet. That would be great. Uh, it's going to be consistent it's internet. Gonna be, for it's going to be a little bit, but I definitely need it, and. You do. Uh, to continue with my YouTubing adventures. But, uh, and again, uh, I'll be posting that video on my first break, that the stream on my first break and whatnot. And uh, letting letting them know. The singing scientist, yes. And don't make me sing some Coldplay, because I will. Um, but yeah, there's my PayPal. Just posted it. And... Uh, Zero degree Tardian US has no kinetic energy. A zero degree Tachyon has the infinite kinetic energy, and there would be uh, there would be no uh, resistance between either. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What she's doing is she's validating my concept. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What, what you're doing that is I don't have around. time to go into details myself. Yeah, exactly. I understand. You're you figured <laughs> out a way to get around a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot yeah. of the difficulties yep. that science proposes that we would have with mm -hmm. with this kind of travel and just saying hey let's let's get but, a little uh, bit older. there's my paypal in the thingamadooter and uh i will be having a show tonight and again it, if you like if you like fnf it's not as good as fnf but i do do a variety show i do I do do, you know, funny haha -ha stuff and you know i impersonate a lot of uh, motley crew of characters and uh, yeah, that's my ride to oh, get Tony. some errands done. To yes, okay. I thank do you so much, Tony, to for Avengers. being here. And uh, yes, yes, thank you. Yes, he is on to something. That's it. whenever I said, "Hey, I need to pick your brain." You're an actual physicist. I meant it. <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> it's just like I'm an engineer, so I see the math, I see the functions. And I see the relations of one and just being a other. <laughs> just being a lay person myself, I am very excited by the idea. Also, in terms of um, wanting to see it, see it uh, done in fiction first. In mm -hmm. reality, maybe never, but <laughs> it's it's super cool to think about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today on faster than light travel, and I wish you the best rest of your day. Have a have a wonderful time, and everybody, make sure to go subscribe to Stark of Iron and go hang out with him. And so, even if he is he is singing and dancing, doing all of his fun stuff, you can also ask him some science questions if you want, because he I has usually, that knowledge. I usually shoehorn it in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and and that that's the stuff that I yeah, <laughs> Cronus. I'm a very late person. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but but I like to have fun with it. And so thank but you yes, for I do providing that fun to mobile today. hotspot for tonight. And um, so I will still be doing at least two shows every night, you know, every, every week, 
and then I'll be guesting on around two shows every week. That way I can stretch out my hotspot and not have to throw a lot of money into it. And uh, so, yeah. Um, with that stated, I uh, hope to see you at the Frolics. I will be, you know, sitting my hails uh, at during lunch um, and whatnot. And then obviously the after party show after work, which will be a little bit after the Frolics. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not going to be like directly after the Frolics like it, like it was that one day, which was the most successful stream I ever had. It is going to be a 3.30 Eastern Standard. I just, I can't, I can't time travel off my hours. And I need to hold on to, you know, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Um, You're not going to get a whole lot of sleep, but uh, we will see you later. And no, I'm here to entertain you all you and to work towards getting a better internet. So, any and all donations are accepted. And please attach a request to it. Make it into a pseudo super chat. I call them pseudo super chats. You yeah, can ask that's me to do what that. they are. Yeah. That's so nice. so by all means, throw a request on there, especially when I'm live tonight at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, any derivative, Jill, it has been an honor and a pleasure, as always, to get really geeky with you and to express my... Uh, thoughts in a manner that's usually in a mind that is trapped around a sea of people that just don't get it. So Kermit singing really oh, and I do my best. Lot. Well, thank you. Then, then, then by all means, I will definitely have Kermit singing the uh, woke ass connection for you tonight, James, because her to be there. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, I got to go. I got to put my shoes on, grab a bag and head to work. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Go go work and we'll see uh, you I'm later. I'm going to in on my and phone. I'm yeah, so I'll just I'll just be wrapping up the show and everything, and so yeah, we, we can have the chat, and Ooh. I'll probably hang out with the chat until you're done. And okay, uh, sweet. All right, talk to you later. Okay, later. Bye. Bye bye. And that was Tony. Thank you so much, Tony, for providing a wonderful discussion on faster than light travel. I couldn't have had that discussion without him. I abs because of course my. My discussion on and it's a lot shorter, but he has such a wealth of imagination combined with the science knowledge to make this kind of thing a very exciting show. So I was very happy to have him for as long as I did in order to explore those options, explore all of the kinds of different physicalities that could be possible, even though this kind of thing is still just a thought experiment. It is it is one that is backed by lots of mathematics that that are something actually beyond. I have a minor in math, but I I, I don't even come close to the math that this is this is talking about. I've I I look at you know the math for gravity and all of that and all of all of what Isaac Newton has done. But beyond that, I've got to move up move up in the world of math and science and that is something that is one of my goals in life so it'll, it'll be a lot of fun to get there someday and i want to thank everybody in the the chat it's just as incredible as ever i can't believe i'm lucky enough to have all of these people who like to listen in on the kinds of things that i am also interested in and so i did ask the poll to see if if uh if you guys want to have another science show, and it does look like you do, and I asked what, what would be the next science show that we could cover, and the next one would be artificial gravity. So it looks like it's definitely going to be artificial gravity. I'm going to end the poll there. And so thank you guys for voting. And so next time we're going to talk about gravity. Gravity is a bitch. <laughs> it... And so just because you fall off your bicycle and it hurts a bunch, it doesn't mean that gravity is very strong. Gravity is a very weak force. That's that's my elementary understanding of it. It's the weakest of the forces because, well, potentially not all of it is in our dimension. But that's something that I guess I'm going to have to ask Tony about because I don't exactly have the the deepest understanding of any of this. I am I am just like you guys are mostly just having a, I'm a big fan of this kind of science which is part of why i love science fiction because it takes the reality of science and it stretches it to its ends and we saw a wonderful example of that with tony's theory about using absolute zero to get around some of the physics that we're 
bounded by. And I just, I want to see a, a sci-fi show that uses that concept. And it's going to be kind of difficult because all our characters are going to be frozen. But I guess we can kind of speed up the, the kind of make it an effect. And then we get to see the aftermath of that. And maybe they also have a normal space drive so we can actually have... We they actually also have normal warp drive, so we can actually see when they when they drop out of their their absolute zero stuff, then they go back to the normal warp drive, and we get to see them move around again. And I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if that ever actually becomes a story, because I'm I'm happy about that. So with 24 votes, I close the poll. And so the reason I'm closing the poll now is so that I could copy and paste it and put it in my description because I like to save these polls for posterity so that I remember the results of them because they are very important to me. I like I like any kind of any kind of feedback that I get. And so we had we had lots of cool chats, I think, while while Tony was still here. So and I do want to thank everybody who was here. Y'all are so cool. So Canadian Spider-Man says, okay, so that's where I was. I need to, there's also an inertial destroyer. Yeah. And inertia is where we matter. So that's where you're, you're going until an outside force stops you. And then when that outside force stops you, that's, that's when you do quit. <laughs> Let's see. And I'll, okay, so there it is. I'm looking I'm looking to where I was in the chat, so that's why I'm scrolling around a bit. And so yes, Princess Fiona's right. We don't understand regular gravity, much less artificial gravity. We can't do simulated easy. So I can't wait to look into that myself and see what's going on there. Gravity is a pretty cool force. I don't want to see I um Oh, to PVP, he says, she says, exactly. I don't want to see the same idiots I see in traffic being able to fly. So I'm just looking at some of the chats that I couldn't read earlier because I wanted to make sure that Tony got to talk about his theory. And I'm so glad he did because now I, I my imagination is fed further. And I am just so happy to be able to talk to him and explore these kind of ideas. PVP says, I remember when reading that trains were traveling too fast and that folks would die because of it. I know, 30 miles per hour, that's dangerous. <laughs> Thank you, PVP. Princess Fiona says, there's an interesting theory that the Earth's unusually large moon contributed to the conditions that led to life. In that case, life could be much more rare than originally suspected. And yeah, that is, that is a very interesting theory in that we... Moons may are certainly it's certainly extremely important on Earth. If we lost our moon, we would lose life as we know it, and so and it it helps regulate the tides and regulate the weather, and it it is so vitally important to life on Earth that it makes sense that it would be important to life elsewhere. If not a if not a moon, then at least maybe we need to have some kind of sister planet that is that is going around that to play off of the gravity that we need in order to regulate the kinds of things that a, a planet needs. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about that. It is a good theory, and I'd like to know more. And if we ever found a planet that could survive without a moon, that would be interesting. Mark Harkness says, Humans have enough trouble with 2D driving. Adding up and down to our traffic pattern is madness yeah that, well that is it, right now the way that we do that is airplanes and air traffic control so if you want to you want to travel up and down you have to have a pilot's license and maybe that's the way it should always be we even if we do get flying cars we should still make it that that person needs to be a pilot in order to do it because it, it, there there should be some sort of gatekeeping there in terms of keeping the skies safe and PVP says, also folks through flight thought flight was impossible. And then the Wright brothers said, hold my beer. Yeah, of course. And the possibilities of that were 
posited by Leonardo da Vinci long before the Wright brothers finally turned it into a reality. And so his inventions and ideas of creating robots and airplanes were so far beyond his time. It was incredible. He was he was not just an, uh, an amazing artist, but a pioneer in, in science fiction itself also because he he was uh, he created his own thought experiments of a reality that he didn't get to see but that he inspired, I am sure. Sean Carter says, a thousand pound passenger capacity. Will someone tell Lizzo she is S-O-L? <laughs> oh, man, was that when Tony was talking about, um, uh, he was talking about a capsule that could carry you through just like an escape pod? <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't, I, I don't know who Lizzo is exactly. I just know that she is, she's like, she sings and she's obese, morbidly obese. Like, I don't know, but she, she does her thing and she is able to be successful. So I, I don't know anything about her beyond that. Really. <laughs> Lizzo is a big girl, says Christian fandom geek that I do not doubt. That is that is all I know about her, really, that she sings and she is big. Chrono says, I would have to be drinking to make a craft like they did. Arm Briggs on Patreon. Yeah, no, this is a great time to talk about Arm Briggs because she is somebody who appreciates real science and and how our reality today plays in can play into science fiction and her her stories are a tribute to that if you if you listen to her stories you well you, you can't listen because she doesn't have audiobooks yet even though that's something that could be in the works it's something to keep it's if you want to know more about that possibility definitely sign up for her patreon it, she doesn't require i i'm only there at a dollar a month and you can you can support you can help support her in, in that at very cheaply and help support real science fiction authors out there who are making really cool stories. I enjoy her stories because they talk, they do talk about the reality uh, of, of what it would be like if we're not alone and not just that topic, but all of the other topics uh, of that, how that would affect society itself. And I think that's a lot of fun to think about. It, she has a near future kind of science fiction going that is really gripping to me, and I enjoy it so much. Princess Pans Ronoff says, Earth's moon does indeed make it special among Goldilocks planets. Sliminim says, create a gravity point in the front of the ship and let it fall through space. And that's, oh, that's the one. Oh, okay. I think Tony did cover that. So thank you, Tony, in the past for for seeing that comment that I kind of missed. And he did mention that that would that the laws of physics kind of have an issue with that one, I think. And so Mega Cropper says, "Is a wormhole different than a black hole?" And yeah, that's different. Um, a black hole will suck in anything, even light, into its sphere, and your survival is unknown although in the orville they they did have a lot of fun with hiding in a black hole in season two season two was a really great season of the orville and they they were able to get back out of it so but time passes differently when you're in that black hole and so even though they were only in there a few hours when they came out several weeks had passed and so that was that was a lot of that was a lot of fun i enjoyed i enjoyed that episode it had a lot of Star Wars kind of feel to it. Chrono says, how do you type beam me up in Klingon? I do not know the Klingon language, unfortunately, but I do have a Klingon dictionary. So maybe that's something I could look up at some point for you. Uh, on just a moment.
Okay, sorry about that brief moment of uh, silence. I had to converse with my family. And that is, of course, the most important aspect of my life. And I love my family very much. And they mean everything to me. And I'm so glad that they are here. And they're they're going to, they're, they're going. And they'll be back. Of course, they're not going <laughs> in, in, for too long. Sean Carter says, I think quantum entanglement as just two ends of the wormhole to instantaneously affect spin on something irregardless of distance suggests a connection of some kind. Oh, yeah. And that's that's definitely a very interesting concept. That's why quantum physics is something that I definitely want to get into. And Captain Infinity, I wonder if he's still here. I'm I'm behind on the chat, so I was just I'm just reading the chat before I close up here. Franco Walker says there could be life on the moon. A rover crashed there with some tardigrades on it as an experiment. Well, the the thing with that, I remember that. What happened was tardigrades can survive in deep space for quite a long time. I don't remember how long they lasted. Was it like a year? And so but the reason why the tar the tardigrades weren't exactly they were alive, but they weren't exactly living in real time. I get oh man, how tardigrades work is kind of a mystery to me because what they were able to do was put themselves in suspension, and that's why they were able to be alive for so long. That's why when when they when when they retrieve the tardigrades, they're still alive even after an extended period of time because they go into a stasis. And if we could go into that kind of stasis, we those intergenerational ships that Tony and I were talking about earlier would be a lot easier to do because then the people on those ships could kind of freeze themselves a little bit to extend their lifespan like a tardigrade can do in real life. So that's something that is possible. And tardigrades give us the hope that it is something that we can do someday. Because if a tardigrade can do it, can we do it too? Maybe. I don't know. PVP says, I feel so lucky to be alive in such an amazing point in time. Me too. We're uh, Carl Sagan. I love that Tony was quoting Carl Sagan a bunch because I do too. Carl Sagan said, we're just on the shore of the cosmic ocean. Yeah, so we, we're just ankle deep right now. And someday we'll be able to go further, hopefully, if we if we stop being so self, self uh, you know, self conceited and thinking that this is the only place to ever be. Dalek451 says, hi again, Jill. Don't worry. I'm getting better. I'm out with my brother and we just bought takeaway for our tea and are walking home. Oh, that is great. I'm so glad you're feeling better. I, I saw that you walked in earlier. You weren't feeling great. And that that's that's not good. And so I do like to check in with people and see how they're doing. I'm glad I'm glad you're you're improved, much improved now. And subscribe to King Dolphin TV. Yes, Stream Elements wants you to remember to subscribe to King Dolphin TV because that is a really great channel. And he has a lot of fun. Tomorrow he's going to have his Just Cuz. And on Wednesdays he has interviews uh, with various people, creators. And last, this past Wednesday, if you haven't seen it, it is it was a really great show that you need to check out because it was about it was all about pit bulls. And how they're misunderstood by society in general and vilified un due to more due to how the humans treat them and train them and not due to their own fault in, 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 in any kind of instance. And I thought that that was a really great uh, stream by a rescue. He, he had on a rescue uh who was talking about that very issue. And so there, I'm glad that there are advocates out there for our fellow creatures here on Earth because we talk a lot about alien life. And then if we're ever going to really understand an alien life form when they visit, we have to be able to communicate and be kind to the life that we already have on Earth. And if we cannot get along with life on Earth, we're not going to be getting along with any visitors from other planets. And yeah, Captain Infinity is welcome. Captain Infinity has a link. And uh, lots of people have, have it. If anybody wants it, please let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, 
let me know if you if anybody wants a link because I do I do have a few minutes. That's why I'm still here. Charles Strauss has a very interesting form of FTL quantum entangled communications in his books. It's very well thought out. And yeah, I read this one before, but I'm reading it again because I need to copy and paste that information. Because if there's one way that I can be enabled, so this is a, a plug for Mark D with the C's channel, who has an incredible channel. He just went to I um Terrificon. And so I, I still need to rewatch his stream because I wasn't able to be there for his Sunday show where he talked about his travels there. But he he has a channel where he enables a lot of people to buy all sorts of cool toys and things. But the thing that I'm usually enabled to buy when he talks or when Raquel Briggs talks is our books. And so I, it's possible that I might be buying this book pretty soon. So thank you, Princess Fiona. Cavemen are mistreated. <laughs> Cronus, I, I don't know what led to this. See, the, the thing with Cronus is that if I miss a thread of his conversation, I'm not really quite sure where it came from or where it's going to. But, it, and I'm sure a thousand years from now, we'll be considered the cavemen, even though, you know, we're, we're in the information age. But history is going to be perceived by the observer. And we're back to relativity. Your your perception of reality is based on your relativity, your relative space and time. <laughs> Cavemen lives matter, says Franco Walker. So even though I don't know where that, that comment came from, it seems to be the prevailing kind of interest in the chat, which is, I mean, let's be clear, y'all are why I'm here. So if, if PVP says, if I were a caveman, I'd want to be Fred Flintstone. <laughs> well, yeah, and they have their own form of travel. They travel with their feet. <laughs> but still somehow have the wheel. Chrono says, the cave gals were beating up on me. Oh, hmm, interesting. Well, and that reminds me of... Uh, there's a Star Trek parody out there that combines the idea of Star Trek and the Flintstones, and I still need to watch that. And Krona says, I don't believe in astrology, me either, but I, I, I shouldn't be callous to those who do, and I'm not. And part, a small part of me like wants to think about it and, and it likes to have fun with it, but the reality is that we are much more affected by the gravity of the moon than by the gravity of the stars that we were born under. James Caserta says, engage the Omega device. Oh, no, you were trying to <laughs> trigger Tony into becoming uh, his Galaxy Quest villain, the Galaxy Quest villain there. A Soros. No, wait, that's <laughs> that's the Generations villain. That's the Star Trek Generations villain. A Saris, Saris. Okay, so it just took a moment for my brain to, to, <laughs> to um, well, you can see why I made that mistake because Soros, Saris, those, those are two very juxtaposed names, both beginning with the S. Princess Panzeronoff says, quantum astrology? That could be the next best big thing, Jill. I need to make up some charts. Oh my gosh, really? That would be amazing. I would love to see your charts. I think probably one of my favorite things today was when we were discussing how Tony needed a visual aid and how he just grabbed a piece of paper and created it. And that was pretty fun. That that was incredible. I enjoyed it. Oh, a fortune cookie. <laughs> yeah, fortune cookies, the, the uh, Chinese-American invention... It, it, that is that is um, the pinnacle of the Americanization of Chinese food, and it is it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun too. Barbie's pretty hot these days, says Mega Cropper. I have not seen that movie. I know a lot of people have seen it, and they think it it is a a perfect parody of the times we live in today. But I have not seen it once one way or another. I've also heard that it's kind of meh. And it's not. It's kind of okay. So it's it's ranging from people range. Uh, they're all over the board with this movie. There's no way to know what this movie is without seeing it for yourself. And I haven't seen it, so 
I and I'm not really all that interested in seeing it. I'm not sure if I want to. The only my history with Barbie being a girl myself is not that expansive. I'm not I I was never that into the Barbies. I I was given a dollhouse when I was a kid and so I loved that dollhouse because it had a pulley system on it for it that it that it used as an elevator. So the pulley the pulley elevator was really cool. So I put all my, I, I was more into McDonald's toys. So I'd put my McDonald's toys on the elevator. <laughs> I don't know. Thank, thank you for that tangent, Mega Cropper. Franco Walker says, get in there first and make a fortune. Yeah, definitely, Princess Fiona. You, you, I can't wait to hear the stories that you come up with that. I think the, the storytelling of this science fiction based on scientific possibilities is is what really inspired the show today. Quantum field theory. Thank you so much for being here today, uh, Christian Fandom Geek. He's a bit shy with the big crowd, AJ. <laughs> and James Caserta says, quantum physics for dummies is cheaper than quantum physics for idiots, but far less accurate. Hmm. Oh, well... <laughs> those are those are some good books I guess I could check out too but I think I like to I like to hear from individuals who have a grasp of what they're talking about and that's why it was fun to have Tony today Darius Munchausen says newspaper horoscopes are stupid but astrology may have been an ancient system for tracking deep cycles of time like the great year anti-derivative Jill and you're absolutely right Darius it is absolutely wrong for me to discount astrology in general because astrology was the birth of astronomy and it was how they tracked the stars and how they decided when was a good time to plant your crops to eat and be able to live so it is very wrong of me to to completely discount astrology in general because of that reality the reality was astrology was used as the beginnings of astronomy and thank you for reminding me of that. That is that is very true. You, if you want to see that shown in more detail, watching Carl Sagan's Cosmos is one of my favorite things to do. And they he talks about that. And but but of course it also it also played into a lot of the politics of the time as well as helping farmers feed the nation. Lots of real life Game of, Stro Game of Thrones stuff happened there. And yes, so yeah, okay, so now we're moving up to when Tony had his theory, his thermodynamics, based on thermodynamics and absolute zero. And so Kronos says, I didn't invent it. Okay, so the precision, okay, so Darius says, the precision of the Earth passes backwards through the zodiac one constellation every 2000 years jill that's why the age of aquarius means oh wait a minute i think he had if if there was a long cycle of cataclysmic events from the oort cloud objects being disturbed by planet x jill we may wish we had taken astrology more seriously and yeah, yeah, astrology definitely has a place, especially for mapping out the stars, the beginnings of when people, when people finally had a chance, when it, it, it did co coincide when we figured out how to farm and we, we finally had a chance to sit around the fire and look at the stars and say, hey, look at that, that looks like a pattern and what does it mean to us? And so uh, I'm very glad that you brought these kinds of things up because it, it definitely isn't a, it, it isn't a thing to be ignored. And I do, I do appreciate any time Darius comes in with, with those kinds of truths. Christian Fandom Geek says, because the universe is expanding. Darius is on fire. Yeah, he was. He, he did. Thank you so much, Darius. PVP says, all good ideas start with implausible conjectures. And hmm, and, and and that's certainly true in science fiction. And, and plausible, it, it is good to be plausible too, though. And that's why we have mathematics to try to correlate reality with our thought experiments. 
and zero degrees Kelvin would allow for the jumping of energy states from tardions to tachyons. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and so thank you for understanding, Tony. Canadian Spider-Man says, Astrology, in my opinion, is fun, but I have friends that believe in it simply because they don't want to be held accountable for their own choices. Yeah, so astrology should be, be respected as it, in its role for jump-starting astro, uh, astronomy, astrophysics. But in terms of predicting the future, that's, that's another story. It, it, it predicts the future in terms of telling us when there's going to be a solar eclipse, when certain astronomical events happen. So that's how that's where its value truly it lies. You made me think of a conspiracy uh, theory engine, Krona says to Christian Phantom Geek. PVP says we're all born as an empty slate. Our pondering reality is how we fill the slate. And Frankel Walker says there was a physicist in Mexico working on a warp drive in the late 1990s. He just disappeared, though, after talking about it. Wait, are you talking about? Oh, man, I didn't even get to get to the part where I wanted to talk about the other physicists that are actually talking about this kind of thing. But wait a second here. Are you talking about Alcubierre? Is Alcubierre from Mexico? Where is he from? Miguel Alcubierre is a Mexican theoretical physicist known for proposing the Alcubierre drive, a speculative warp drive by which spacecraft could achieve faster than light travel. Yes, exactly. That that's what it was. He he argued that the mathematics of general relativity allowed for warp bubbles. So so that was something that I was going to bring up with Tony if we had time, but that that kind of live stream would be if we would have had like three or four hours to just just get all, have him get all his theories out and he got his theories out and so then where I was going to go if we had time after that was talking about other scientists theories after his theories and <laughs> so 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 that's that that would have made for an even better show but alas tony must work because he must eat and if we want to hear more from tony he must continue to consume vast quantities of nourishment <laughs> and in order for that to happen he's got to work in any case but yeah that's exactly who that's exactly who I was going to talk about next because he 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 was the one who said, hey, Star Trek's cool. Let's let's imagine that we actually could bend space-time to make a warp bubble and expand it. He, it. The way he did it was he expanded it in the rear to allow a flat area inside the bubble to travel faster than light. And must, Cronus says, must be nice to have a wrench. Yeah. It is nice. I like having wrenches. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Christian Fandom Geek would love to have one as well. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. I'd... And let me think about that just for a minute, guys. Tony, please come back to the Avengers. <laughs> oh okay and then we're just talking about marvel in general there well i don't know i think we need you yeah it's just i think i don't really i this is where i'm gonna lose you guys i i the, the comic book stuff that that is something that like quantum physics that's something that i want to get into someday <laughs> yes he is on to something Yes, that that was that theory was so cool, and that that's where my that's where my true interest lies right now is in the science fiction realm. And I, when when I expand that to quantum physics or comic books and combine the two, that's when I really have a channel. <laughs> Mark Harkness says that was early Simpsons when they were actually less formula and shtick. Says Mark Harkness. What? Okay, I. Oh, oh, he says, in this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Oh, that's a Simpsons quote. That's funny. <laughs> uh, 
Let's see, what is that quote from? And that's funny. But, oh. <laughs> was, was that the episode where Homer was smart for a while? I don't remember. <laughs> he has he has flashes. Homer Simpson has flashes of brilliance sometimes, but I do remember an episode where he was intelligent in reality or in the uh, Simpsons world reality. I don't I don't watch that crap. I heard it somewhere before. Yeah, I did when I was a kid. I loved Simpsons when I was very little. And I would run to the TV every Sunday. Rest in peace, Tony. Well, no, Tony's still alive. But I guess he's not going to have very much fun for several hours being at work. But at least he does have a job so that he can come back and continue to entertain us. As he sees fit. Princess Panzeronov says, if would if we could convert ourselves to tachyons, then faster than life travel would be our natural state. Tardions is the group of all slower than light particles. Oh, and so we're the tardions. And if we could be tachyons, we could travel on a beam of light. <sighs> Tra faster than life travel would be our natural state. Oh. I definitely would love to get into that. That is fascinating, Princess Fiona. Canadian Spider Man says, Oh man, it smells like fire outside. The smoke is getting worse. Oh man. I am really sorry to hear that, Canadian Spider Man. That I am so sorry that Canada has to go through that kind of thing. And I I hope you're able to breathe easy. Keep Keep uh, keep your air as clean as you can. Do you have any kind of like filters that you can put up to mitigate that? Sean Carter says, anywhere you go is a hot spot to Tony Stark of Iron. Hey, that's true. <laughs> what day is today? Today is Friday. And if uh, I had Scotty R37 here, he would start seeing Rebecca Black and I would get frustrated with him and he would apologize. And then I would tell him it's all right. He enjoys that song. I just think it's awful. James Caserta says Kermit singing really, really helped me out a lot. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's nice. I'm really glad that Tony can make you happy. And Don Don Ranger Power says, it's National Coast Guard Day and National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Oh, really? Then I need to have, so I I just, my, my husband is super sweet. So he bought me some Baileys and nothing would be cooler than having a little Baileys and milk and chocolate chip cookies. That sounds like my entire calorie allotment for the day. Princess Panzeronov says engineers hate dark matter. The concept is fundamentally offensive to engineers' sensibilities. And Tony, I would think, I'm not sure. I think he would make a great engineer if he if he wanted to. I'm not sure why he doesn't go for that kind of um, work because he would he would be wonderful. I think he sells himself short sometimes. Good stream, Jill. Thank you so much. But y'all say God stream, which kind of, it's just kind of funny because we are dealing with the natural laws of physics that that a God could manipulate in order to get warp travel. And Q does not require a starship. Don Don Ranger Power says, speaking of Power Rangers, I bought myself the Cosmic Fury Morpher, among with other things that I bought on Amazon. Oh, that's so great. It is always wonderful when you can buy physical representations of the fandoms that you love. And I, I, for me, I enjoy it more in the form of a book, like, because I love to reference that sort of material and, and explore it that way. I didn't even, I have next to me actually a book, uh, National Geographic, Star Trek, The Official Guide to Our Universe, The True Science Behind the Starship Voyages. And if I had more time after talking about the other scientist theories, I was going to see if this book had anything interesting in it. But because I have this book and I haven't referenced it much. 
Mark Harkness says, fair enough, but that quote was like the first or second season, one of the very few bits that aged well after 30 years. Yeah, well, I think The Simpsons had about 13 good seasons, and I say 13 because I tried to do a rewatch fairly recently, and around the 13th season is where I lost my interest, and I kind of just stopped watching, even though I had the capability of continuing so I'd say 13 seasons of uh, tremendous animation. And then that movie, which came around the 20th season, that movie was cool. And that's what they got. And I think it's a pretty good run for any show. PVP says, intense stream, Jill. My brain hurts. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I could I, I'm glad I could facilitate this kind of talk. And I'm glad that Tony was around to help make the stream happen because I had a tremendous time talking about it. Princess Fiona said, I lurked as long as I could, but I broke down. I'm bad at keeping quiet. I am so glad you didn't stay quiet, Princess Fiona, because you are such a phenomenal mind. And whenever I say that I have a chat that is more intelligent than I am, I'm specifically referencing you, uh, people like you, Darius Munchausen and others. I, I won't name too many is, is for fear of, you know, everybody. Everybody is so intelligent in this chat. And I can't I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say next. I understand there are mixed reviews regarding the Cosmic Morpher from Hasbro. Oh, okay. Done, done, Ranger Power. I'm so, yeah, I, I hope whatever, whatever toys you get that are related to your fandom are what you expect. And they're really good. That, that that you give a good review for these toys would be good. Canadian Spider-Man says, we're thrilled to be with you, um, anti-derivative show. Thank you, Canadian Spider-Man. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. I could be in a sideshow, says Cronus. <laughs> well, if you do make it to the circus, let me know. Oh, uh, <laughs> PVP says, not too bad, Don. Don, have a doctor's appointment in three hours to get my blood pre pressure checked. So that's good. Yeah, that is very good. Uh, definitely important to take care of yourself. That's an important thing to do. I'm glad you're going to get that checked out. I hope the best for you. Franco Walker says, I saw it on Tracy, the Tracy Ullman show where it first started. It was shit then, too. I must have heard something ripping off, someone ripping off that quote. And yeah, so, oh, oh, yeah. OK, The Simpsons did start off as a as a special feature on that show. And speaking of Hasbro, I understand that it is sold E1 to Lionsgate, but that's keeping Power Rangers. Thank the maker. Oh. Okay, I'm glad whatever, whatever, um, I'm glad that someone good is keeping Power Rangers because that is good. I, I have no idea. I Honestly, Donnie, I stopped watching Power Rangers when I was seven, not saying that I wouldn't go see once and again at some point. I've been wanting to see that because it is based off of the Power Rangers I saw when I was a little kid. So it would be kind of cool to see them all get back together. James Caserta says, Jill's getting, Jill getting mad at you is a real task. And I, I appreciate your, your um, fortitude in continuing on upon that endeavor. Good luck in your journeys. Canadian Spider-Man says, it is a British Columbia day all weekend, so I might not be able to hang for long at Friday Night Frolics tonight if I'm at the lake. No internet there. But it is very important for you to go hang out and be with your friends. And I'm glad that you're going to go or even just chill on your own. Whatever you decide to do, you even though you do not have the internet, what you will have is a phone with a battery. So I hope we get like a few uh, a video from the lake. Because even though I enjoy, I love your videos that you take on your travels all around the world. Those are incredible. Especially your backlog. Not, not just of your most recent Mexico tri trip, but your backlog of places like Galapagos and all of these places you've been. It's just baffling how much you've been able to explore in your short time here on Earth. You're an inspiration to anybody who wants to be a traveler. You've done it, and it is so cool. But I still appreciate 
your backyard. You still have a very beautiful backyard. And Donnie says, I see. As for me, I'm mighty morphin. On this this fourth day of Power Rangers month, I didn't know it was Power Rangers month. Math is the part of physics that's not as fun. The physics is all math, by the way. <laughs> Another professor quote. I I don't know. I, I disagree with that. I kind of, I, I guess it's true we didn't get into any of the actual physics, the math of the physics. So Tony kept it, he kept it very layman's today, which I appreciate because it was, it made it, it made it more fun to explore. It made it more of a fun topic to express and, um, and and I just I, I enjoyed it so much. So thank you again, Tony. I can't thank you enough. Subscribe to Stark of Iron. And and Dalek is finally home. He's tired. Oh, I love that feeling though when you've been out all day, and you've been because he's an introvert like me. He's ex been expending this energy, and it's not just the energy of leaving your home that you expend when you're an introvert. It's also the internal energy of being around a lot of people. And so when you get home, it, it is a very refreshing feeling to finally be back. You can finally, you can recharge. And especially if you, you've been out with a lot of people. So I, I'm glad that you've made it back home. And I hope you're, you have a wonderful Friday, Dalek. So Canadian Spider-Man says to Donnie, doing well. But the fire smoke is a bit thick today. Hope you're well. So, so Canadian Spider-Man, despite the the smoke fire, the fire smoke, please be safe, Spidey. You're going to be hanging out on the lake. I hope it is. I hope things clear up for you. Uh, I, I really, it saddens me. You'd love to be outside, and yet the outside is not doing you very well. Chrono says, "I don't do map." <laughs> Well, and you know what? And I love to, this is why I love to tutor. I love to be a math tutor because I didn't do math for a large portion of my life, but I enjoyed being good at school. So my desire to get good grades kept me after school. Before I became a math tutor, I was the tutored. I would stay after school and try, and I would have to work hard just to maintain a B average in mathematics when I was just a kid in eighth grade. And so I kept doing that and kept doing that. And eventually, by the time I reached college, I was the math tutor. So it does require a bunch of work to, to be able to come up with the, the ability to take a problem and break it apart so so that's how you know how to break apart a problem and you take it piece by piece if you try to look at the whole picture all at once it's going to be overwhelming but if you you snap it up you break it up and and that's why i became a computer scientist because i'm able to compartmentalize those problems and look at it one step at a time. And if you want to look at it plainly, a computer science degree is a mathematics degree because the way you solve problems and problems in both are very similar and they both do use mathematics. And so actually, just like, <laughs> just like, okay, so my other favorite movie is a mathematics movie, Stand and Deliver, just like, um, Escalante says, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. They can. It's just, it just requires breaking the problems up. And not being afraid to write it down, writing down every little thing. I have to, I'm a pencil and paper mathematician. Uh, I, I can't do it without the pencil and paper. I don't do it in my head. I'm not a calculator. I, I try to be, but I can't. I can't. And so... And so I don't have a problem with having to break up the problem and take it piece by piece and being, it, it requires a bit of humility. PVP says, Jill gravity gets more challenging as you age. <laughs> that, it, that is true. That is true. Yes. And, and that, even though, yeah, I'm, I'm in my 30s and I can already feel a bit of that. Franco Walker says, welcome to the end of the stream. <laughs> yeah, the end of the stream. Yeah, 40 minutes ago, 
well, that that was the beginning of the end of the stream. You never know when my stream is going to end exactly. I'm having a great time hanging out with you guys. Donnie says, well, Monday does mark civic holiday across Canada, including British Columbia Day. Oh, wow. See, and and so I'm in this little sphere of being in America. So I don't I, I don't remember when these other countries have other holidays. And I just appreciate it so much that I have an international audience that can remind me of the existence of the rest of the world. And it's so cool. So civic holiday. Oh, that's why that's why Scotty R37 was saying that he was going to have a long weekend. I guess he has Monday off. Is that true? I, I guess I don't remember. I, I'm a little confused. But that's okay. What else is new? Don, Darius Munchausen says, glad you're home safe. Dalek451. Me too. And Captain, Captain Finity catch Captain live immediately after this live stream for more exciting physics verisimilitude commentary. Yes, exactly. And so Oh, yeah, I don't I don't know if I said it before, but I do realize that these these points, this fast, faster than life travel that we're talking about is just science fiction for now. And so I do I am capable of separating the realities of physics from the from the out the the more out there kind of more freeing nature of a science fiction narrative that is used as a plot structure to get from point A to point B and to have a fun story with plots and characters. And of course we need, we need warp travel to be able to get across vast distances in a story. And so that makes it, that makes it helpful story wise. And so I can definitely put aside the physics the real physics to have fun with the story. I can do both. And Franco Walker says, Captain Infinity, I'll be there. Much love again, Jill. Thank you, Tony. And I'm so I'm so happy to have all of you here. You you really made this a cool stream. I could end it now and it would have been a, a great stream. But I wanted to say thank you to the chat and that's why I'm here. James Caserta says, I'm keeping trying to make the princess happy. Oh, yes. It's very important to make the princess happy. Thank you, Spidey, says Tony. Yes. I can't drive 88. You can't drive 88. Okay, well, but if you can't drive 88 miles per hour, Kronos, you're never going to get back to the future. <laughs> Captain Finity says Vulcan has no moon. And yes, so that that is a topic of contention, not not only among Star Trek fans and fans of real physics who realize the importance of the moon that here on Earth, but it's also it was also a topic for DC Fontana. She realized that there needed to be there needed to be something there with with Vulcan. And so she came up with a sister planet that we that we after after yesteryear we saw in yesteryear that there was an animation of a large world next to Vulcan and so she posited that that is the sister planet to Vulcan and that they orbit each other but it isn't canon despite being from one of the preeminent creators of Star Trek so it's not canon that Vulcan has a sister planet, but it is definitely talked about everywhere. And so I would love it if it did. I would I I would love so if there's anything that I'd love to be made canon, it would be that. And so it would still match, it would still follow the TOS canon of saying Vulcan has no moon. It would still not have a moon, but it would have the gravitational forces that would allow for weather regulation and all of those fun things that we know facilitate life as we know it but of course it's star trek and so encountering life as we don't know it is the name of the game so i'm okay with that too moons matter <laughs> says pvp and uh oh mr brown alliance is here i'm so incredibly happy to see you here he says pronouns are more important to some people than this amazing science and right, I'm here for the science, y'all. Well, I don't know what you're here for, but I'm here for learning about 
what we could possibly do, what we could possibly not do. Maybe, maybe we can't do it. And it's all just for fun for imagining green women dancing next to a swimming pool. But, but whatever it's for, I'm here for that. Not for the, the, I mean, come on. If you want to tell me what to call you, you're an individual who wants to be called something, just say, hey, you know, nice to meet you, your name, let me know your name. If you got <coughs> a name you'd like me to call you, you can tell me, but it needs to be like an, an, an individual basis. We don't need to have like a big conglomerate telling everybody what to do. This is something that we handle already as, a, as a, humans who care about one another. If you care about somebody, you'll learn about them and, and if they have a nickname they want to be called, they'll tell you. Otherwise, it, I don't really see the whole importance of getting bogged down in any sort of thing. If you want to tell me who you are, then let's let's go see a movie. I don't know. What are you doing later? Princess Panzerunov says, Tidal forces created the shallow pools where we suspected life began. Shallow and dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that that was that was your point earlier in saying how important moons might be to life, making it a rare, more of a rarity than even the Drake equation can fathom. And so, having a live stream on the updates from the Drake equation, as I saw it in Carl Sagan's Cosmos, that's where I first learned about it, and how it stands today, would be super fun. So I'm gonna type that down. as a potential live stream for the future. Dalek451 says, Oh, I just got home with my tea and you're wrapping up. I was going to listen while I ate. Well, you know what? You actually did get to listen while you ate because it's been 46 minutes and I think that was enough content to listen. And even though it was just, it was just me, but people are still here anyway, which is super exciting. James Caserta says, he thinks, he really thinks he's smart. And that, that goes for everybody here on YouTube. I think if we're here talking, we think on some level we have some kind of cognitive development that allows for us to share our thoughts and ideas across the ether of the internet and to see who reaches back. So this is a bit like SETI, except with our own species. We're, we're sending out our, our thoughts and we're seeing who reaches back and in that case, it is ourselves. And until we have other species to talk to, I'm glad I could talk to you. <laughs> Stark of Iron says, infinite space, infinite chance of exotic life and extremophiles. Chrono says, I identify as air wolf. <laughs> okay, Chronos. But I thought you were Chronos. Do I have to call you air wolf Chronos? Um, PVP says weird tried to post emojis and got error try twice not without a moon there isn't thank you for the sentence fragments that would only make sense if I were listening in real time to the chat I am a bit behind still apologies I've seen the Sistine Chapel antiderivative Jill and Da Vinci's genius is very apparent no kidding and that that would be something to do is to examine all of his inventions and do do a live stream on on uh leonardo because i love science fiction but but when it when it delves into the the actual science behind the science fiction interests me just as much as the science fiction and that's just going to be a fact no matter what opinions people have And Leonardo da Vinci is a pioneer for qu quite a bit of it, because lots of his lots of his inventions were possible. It was possible to create lots of the inventions that he that he came up with, but he just didn't have the right materials in, in which to actually make them realities. And so, lots of people today like to look at his inventions and make them real now and build them. And I think I've seen some documentaries where people have done just that. 
like there was a robot that he made that was mechanical and I think somebody built it. Darius Munchausen says, I got nothing against Lizzo and neither do I because I don't really know who she is or what her music's like. And I don't know. I'm just, uh, for me, I live in this bubble myself of the 1990s and I just listen to 90s music. <laughs> I'm probably missing out on some good stuff, I'm sure. PVP says, look at Wright Brothers plane and then the 747. Humans are good at progress when they aren't fighting with each other. And so that's that's the problem with politics is that it, it mires us in this left and right dichotomy that nobody actually lives in. Most of us kind of are a mix of both. And we, we have much more complicated minds than what the mainstream media wants to tell us we are they want to tell us what to think and they they just admire us in these fights that in this infighting that we're encouraged to engage in that goes nowhere because you're not going to convince somebody to change their politics it's just never going to happen and so it, it makes more sense to work together where we can where do our common interests lie and how can we push for humanity ourselves and make the world a better place in terms of just being good to each other be excellent to one another so you know just quit fighting guys it, it, it would help it would help anyway you're right pvp Canadian Spider-Man says, as long as she doesn't claim that people can be as healthy like uh, like her, Darius. <laughs> Agreed. Me neither. Oh, does she do that? I don't know. Right. Uh, 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 yeah. If you're that size, you're not going to be healthy. And so um, you're not going to have a, a very long life. You're not going. Uh, and that's why I, I, I try. I'm trying to lose a bit of weight myself. And because I know it's going to make me healthier. Uh, and and I know that it 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 having too much it does contribute to heart disease and diabetes and all of that stuff. So so it's fine to say that you're beautiful if you're big, but it doesn't make sense to say that you're healthy <laughs> all of the time. And and I guess that could be controversial. I don't know when that became controversial or uh, an actual known science fact of biology became a controversy and that's one of the fighting that we are one of the, the fights that we're having today is that people are more encouraged to say that that it, it it's it's fine if you you, you know it, it 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 and and i'm not saying you should hate yourself or anything if you're bigger or anything like that that, that that's terrible you should love yourself at any size of course that that's not what i'm getting at of course but but it, it is important to face the reality of uh, as you approach a certain a certain mass. <laughs> if we're going back to physics, you're going to have a bit of a problem. But it's it's not just just keep up. Just you know, it, it should inspire you to maybe get in a little walk each day or it, it, and be your best self. And it, I don't know. It's that's a whole nother live stream. I can't even begin to talk about that without somebody else to bounce off with. But as it's just me, I will continue with the chat. Darius Munchausen says, "If our moon is ever destroyed, we can just use this." <laughs> and 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 there's where we're not allowed to make jokes like that anymore. But it, but that is a classic one. It's a classic. It's a classic joke uh, that if you are big enough, you can create your own gravitational field. <laughs> and it's funny. And I, I hate that we're not allowed to make jokes about humanity anymore because laughing at ourselves is the best form of medicine, I believe. I think it is really great to be able to take a moment and look at look at us ourselves and say, hey, we're, we're kind of a funny, we're kind of a funny little animal, aren't we? Corona says, doesn't Lizzo have her own gravitational field? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> James Caserta says, life is a beach and then you dive. Oh, life is a beach and then you dive. 
Hey, there's a coffee cup with that on it, I'm sure. Princess Fiona says, fixed wing flight. We had the Mont Golifer brothers long before. Oh, wait a minute, Princess Fiona. What are you talking about? I, I just love having you here because you teach me so many things. Oh, the balloon, of course, yes. Because, yeah, Franklin Roosevelt took a balloon ride. Oh, my goodness. The Mont Montgolfer brothers were aviation pioneers, balloonist paper manufacturers in France. They invented the hot air balloon. And so, of course, you're absolutely right. That is flight before the Wright brothers. <laughs> Y'all are just the coolest people I've ever met. Franco Walker says, why do you think we have tides? It's li uh <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. It's Lizzo wa walking along. Well, you know what, then? We owe her a lot of gratitude. Thank you, Lizzo, for your existence. <laughs> Um, princess says very different a black hole is a collapsed star a wormhole is a theoretical trans-dimensional bridge between points in space and that's what gives us the incredible series of stargate and if you are lurking scotty r37 you are required i don't know no, i'm just kidding one day you will be required to watch a bit of stargate come on we're not going to watch the movie we're not going to watch the one where they ripped off the destruction of praxis from star trek 6 we're, we're just going to watch a really cool series with richard dean anderson i think that we didn't talk as much about stargates as i wanted to chrono says so that's what's happened to fukushima Oh, when the, um, oh, that's a very serious occurrence where the nuclear power plant exploded. Uh, well, went, went critical, but ish. yeah, that was not a good time. I think I remember donating to Japan when that occurred. That, that sucks when, it, like, nuclear power could be a lot cleaner than it is now, but uh, for some reason we just drag our feet on upgrading that technology. And that could be another live stream is upgrading the technology of, of nuclear power because we, we did, but I think we did touch upon it quite a bit when we talked about nuclear fission, vision the last time. And Princess Panzeronov says there are also super tiny black holes. Same principles apply though. Yeah, she was on holiday there.
Oh, shit. I was talking for quite a long time, and it was all amazing good stuff. I was wondering why my my my, my channel, <laughs> everything was going down. I, I don't really know when I, when, when I muted and when I picked up, but everything I said was really great. <laughs> when did it stop? Oh, anyway, um... Oh, crap. I'm so sorry. You guys missed out on all of that. But thank you, Franco Walker, for being here. Thank you, Raquel SSG. And, um, and of course, it's it's amazing to hear from everybody. And Captain Finity is, is having a show. And it, it's great to hear from everyone. And, oh, man, I, I, does, does, Scotty, where was I? Where was I when, when I, when I went dark? Cause I can I can go over it again if I know where I was. But anyway, Princess Fiona says, "As had to explain to me what takeaway was. I know what tea was. Yeah, I learned I learned from Dalek that tea is ha like having dinner. Takeaway is eating out. It's been about five minutes. So five minutes. Oh shit! Five minutes. Okay." Yeah, so, oh man, see, because I was talking about, I was talking about the Da Vinci, I was talking about how, did, did you guys hear about the part where I, I talked about how, how real life scientists, real life histor historians will take Da Vinci's plans and they will turn it into reality. And so, because when Da Vinci was first, when he made all of these amazing discoveries, he when he made these inventions, he didn't have the materials with which to make them. So did you hear me talk about that? Did, did any, anybody who's been listening for my entire show, did, did you guys hear that part? Because that would help me with, uh, with navigating which part of the chat, which part, which part I missed out on. Crap, when did I? Okay, well. No, oh, no, Da Vinci. Okay, so that's probably about where I was. Damn it. Okay. And so I, I was laughing. Uh, okay, so I was laughing a, a bunch about with y'all's Lizzo comments. I thought they were funny, but I, I thought it was also a shame that humanity is no longer allowed to laugh at themselves. And we're, and most of like if we can't laugh at ourselves, really, what can we laugh about? But the way I explained it earlier was even better. So if our moon is ever destroyed, we can just lose Lizzo. So I was laughing at you guys' jokes, and it was it was it was a lot of fun because I, I do I do even though okay. And Scotty R thirty seven has to go swimming. Um, have a lot of fun going swimming. That is a great swimming is a wonderful thing to do when you are. Yeah, during the summer. What what a wonderful way to spend your day. So have a great time, Scotty R37. Later, you monkey skip ropers. Yeah, exactly. So life's a bitch, and then you dive. And so that's what Scotty's going to be doing. He's going to dive. Well, maybe he's going to dive. Well, make sure it's actually a diving depth if you're going to be diving, because some parts of the pool you cannot dive with. And so, and also one of the other things that I missed when I was muted was, <laughs> was um, it, it, I was thanking Princess Fiona for her great knowledge in the history of uh, travel, um, air travel. And so she reminded me that we have the Montgolfer brothers who invented the hot air balloon long before um, the Wright brothers created their airplanes and so that is an extremely important point to make when exploring the history of traveling in the sky and so thank you so much for bringing up that and and um oh man it, it is it is a very disheartening thing when you are speaking for an extended period of time just to yourself and I, I don't know when I pressed the mute button or even why I pressed the mute button, but I did. And, and I was wondering what, what, why, why the, what, what happened? 
And so thank you guys for cluing me in on that. And I'm glad I eventually saw it. So <laughs> I I hope Scotty R37 has fun swimming. It's all right to talk to yourself, says Kronos. Yeah, but not when I was wanting to talk to you guys. I was telling you that y'all are why I'm here, why I'm able to have such a fun show, and why it, it you guys mean so much to me. But it is all lost to time. All, I had some good stuff there. There was also There are also super tiny black holes. Same principles apply, though, says Princess Fiona. Yes. And so, of course, Pleasant Valley Picker says, have you seen Monte Python's The Age of the Golden Balloons to Princess Fiona? And Pop Culture Curator's at the hospital, and I, I hope everything is all right with you. Um, can you laugh muted, says Kronos. Yeah, I, I was. I was laughing quite a bit. I was just enjoying the hell out of myself talking to you guys and none of you could hear me. It was just the most terrifying thing when I come back and find this dead air. I will try to erase it so it <laughs> so it's not too long in the replay. But I'm glad so many of you stuck by me even though I was even though I was muted. That says a whole lot of how much uh, how much you guys um enjoy my channel and if you do make sure you're hitting the bell so you don't miss in any of the things that you want that you have time to listen to and i hope uh pop culture curator i hope things i hope everything is you're comfortable and everything is okay i know everything is not okay you're going through one of the more most scariest things so lots of lots of hugs and hello to raquel ssg and I know that Franco Walker took off a while back. And subscribe to Susan Dolan with her Mouser Brigade. Yeah, she, she's trying to she's trying to get you guys to check out her kitty cats on YouTube. Apparently, I'm a troll that is friendly that lives under a bridge. Yes, yes, that's right. You're a troll, but you let us pass over the bridge. You're, yeah, but we do have to, we do have to talk. <laughs> it is important to talk with you. Raquel SSG says, don't forget the Jetsons anti-derivative show. I won't. I don't forget the Jetsons. That that was an important cartoon when in my childhood. I liked it. I always liked it more than the Flintstones, but then I thought it was a lot of fun when they had that crossover episode. <clears throat> Princess Fiona says, you're much more affected by the gravity of the doctor that delivered you as a baby. Absolutely fact. This is true. Galaxy Quest is awesome. Yeah, it is. It's one of my favorite movies. And I did, I had a live stream on it with, um, with Scotty or 37 and others. I used, Dalek451 says a UK sentence. How is this for a UK meal? Excuse me. Um, steak pie, chips, mushy peas, and gravity, which I'm eating now. Yum. PVP says, they are probably Barbie fans, Joe. I have no interest ever, never, never. <laughs> yeah, me neither, really. A dollhouse with an elevator. Yeah. Yep. I had that. That was my, fa that was one of my favorite toys. It was cool. Uh, otherwise, I stole toys from my brother because he had the cooler toys. So Sarah's request tonight, too. Jill got a Sid Vicious doll and her journey into punk began. <laughs> Actually, okay, so my journey with punk rock happened when I was 12. And I started listening to the rock and roll station, naturally. But there's not a lot of whole lot of punk rock on a radio station. But I became friends with this girl, and she's a really great girl. She's still here in town, and she's wonderful. And she, we were, funnily enough, we were doing some mathematics. We were doing some algebra, and we were breaking up into teams to do some algebra work. And we were actually supposed to name our teams. And, and we're just teams of two, so it was just me and this girl. 
And so she named our team Rancid. And I was like, but why would we want to name ourselves after decay, after the rotting remains of some, like a rotting sandwich, something that's gone rancid? Like, what? what is, what, why, would, why is that the team na name that you're coming up with right now? And so she explained to me about the band, and that's where my punk rock journey began. If you must know where it began, it was right there. Kronos says, Saurus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was mixing it. Okay, so now we're at the point, Kronos, where I was mixing up Saurus with, with, um, with, uh, Saris. I was mixing up Saris with Saurus, Saurus, Saris, Saris, Saurus. From Galaxy Quest, Saris, yes. Winter is coming. So yeah, I was, I was mixing up Saris with, I don't know if you, you guys got to that part. Like if y'all didn't hear the part where I was mixing up Saris with Saris, then I was gone for much longer than five minutes. And that is terrifying. Pleasant Valley Picker says, you learn more by keeping an open mind. An open mind does not mean gullible. Like being humble does not mean weak. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Considering the possibilities is always fun. And yeah, so Tony can impersonate Sarah. So if you'd like to hear that, definitely check him out. Like a protagonist, but different. How do you how do you describe an antagonist? Uh, yeah, like a protagonist, but different. The antagonist is the anti. Well, it could be an antihero. It could be someone we perceive as a villain who's technically doing something that ends up being good somehow. But an antagonist is not always necessarily a villain. They're basically someone who gets in the way of the protagonist for whatever reason and that's what's really cool about star trek that's one of the reasons star trek is my favorite series because more often than not they don't have a villain they have an antagonist and uh later raquel i'm glad you were here for a while you were gone quite a bit ago <laughs> but i'm but i'm saying goodbye later And PVP says, I'm a Taurus. I think it really does reflect my personality, even though I'm not a big fan of astrology, says PVP. And yeah, it, it's something for fun. It's not something that I take completely seriously. And let's see. Tony Ball calls. <laughs> Krona says, can you break time after bending it too much? <laughs> Hey, yeah, I think I think you might be able to. There's certainly something to talk about there. Thank you, Cronus. He disappeared. Like the guy said he can run like water. Special relativity is short for special case relativity because it does not take gravity into account, says Princess Fiona. Yes. Yes, because gravity is, it's, it's something that's eluding scientists because it cannot be combined into the electromagnetic field. And it, so it gives us so much trouble. That's for being here today, Raquel, says Canadian Spider-Man. Oh, thanks for being here today, Raquel. Yes, thank you. Thank you for everybody being here. I said lots of nice things to the chat while they were still here and, <laughs> and I was muted. Light has no mass, so it's impervious to, light has no mass, so it's impervious to gravity, and so that's, so it's very special. Well, um, so yeah, since light, light, if you could travel on a beam of light, you would have, that's why you would have to be light yourself, <laughs> but but we, we figure, uh, that's why science fiction tries to figure ways around the realities of general relativity. And by working with it instead of against it. PVP says, it's disturbing when folks pressing new posing new ideas disappear. State of our present world. Well, he didn't exactly disappear, actually. I think he did do a follow-up report in 2017, the Mexican scientist. Um, so 
so light travels through space time, which is very much affected by gravity. Eventually, when I see it, I'll make a determination. Light has no mass? I'm not sure. When I step outside in the sun in Australia, the sun hits me like a phys with physical force impact. Says Canadian Spider-Man. Princess Fiona says, I always took that as he warped himself away. And gravity bends light. Maybe you can use gravity to bend a lightsaber so that it actually is actually shaped like a saber. Yes, exactly. Light has no mass, but the space-time it travels through is affected by gravity. For example, the sun. But light itself has no mass. Hence, specific relative, special relativity. And The Simpsons were great in the early seasons. It was counterculture, and then it got popular when episodes began featuring celebrities. I was done, says PvP. I lasted a little bit longer than that. I have to head to the lake to escape the smoke. Oh! Oh, okay. Then go to the lake. I didn't know that the smoke would, would get you away. The lake will get you away from the smoke. So, yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, apparently I was abuted for... As long as I thought, hopefully I wasn't, I don't know. I'm terrified about that now. Yes, I had a really good flow at some certain point. And I just keep, but I'm glad I didn't just keep going without knowing. Dalek451 says, yeah, there was an episode where Homer had a crayon. He put up his nose as a child, removed from his brain, and he became smarter. Yeah, that's the episode I was thinking of. Hence, special relativity, says Captain Infinity. So check out Captain Infinity's stream for discussions on special relativity and Einstein's imagine, imagining that he could ride on a wave of light back when he was ar around in France and skipping school, thinking about much cooler stuff. PVP says Simpsons should have been canceled years ago. Iron, uh, Stark, Tony says of Stark of Iron says photons have zero rest mass they have mass when in, in motion which is light speed when they have mass they bend and lends to other heavier masses in space time thank you Tony I knew there was something something to do that that had that gave photons some kind of mass because uh, photons are both Light is both a wave and a particle, and it's important to make the distinctions. Hana says Simpsons should have been canceled after a who's bye bye. Well, oh my goodness, I didn't even make it as far as getting rid of a poo, and that was a mistake in and of itself. He is one of the best characters. I don't understand what the problem was. He had his own business, and he had his, and he was one of the smarter, more intelligent characters on the show. So I don't really understand the whole controversy there. Really, like, come on, it's it's the whole thing. It's the whole going back to saying we can't, we can no longer laugh at ourselves anymore, and that is the saddest thing in the world. When when the humor is gone from the world. Then what do we have left? And I am not a comedian myself, but I I appreciate those who do want to make us laugh. And I hope they don't stop trying just because it's politically incorrect for whatever reason. It's kind of sad. Anonymous says, have you ever drunk Baileys from a shoe? Mmm, creamy and beige. So, okay, so you guys were still listening while I was talking about the chocolate chip and Baileys. And, and, uh, okay, so that's good. <laughs> Futurama is love and life. Yeah, I don't know about the first episode. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that funny. The first episode of the most recent season. I had, I had notes on that. I can, I can talk about that real quick. Um, I don't have time still. I still have some time. Um, let's see. Um, season 11, let's see if, if we have that. Um, I know I have, I know I have some ideas on the last Futurama. And so let me go see if I have these notes. Because I made notes on it. 
Oh, here it is. Okay, so yeah, Futurama is back, and I could give um, and this this only my my thoughts on it gave me only mild spoilers. I only I only reviewed the first episode. I realized there are two that are out. I still need to watch the second one to see if it gets better. Um, it takes off where the finale leaves off for the series, where the time had stopped for everything surrounding everyone, and that that was a really phenomenal season, series finale. It, Really, that's where Futurama could stop forever and it would have been fine. But as such, Hulu and Futurama and David X. Cohen and friends have decided to continue this series. And I thought the episode was all right. It was kind of, it was okay. I don't, I don't really remember too much because this was over a week ago. But Professor Farnsworth, he, he, he tunnels through time to find Fry and Leela. They're old, but they're still together. So he he gives he gives them a new lease on life where still ostensibly being able to keep their memories of their entire lifetime together, which I thought would have had more of, of an, a, a rippling effect on the characters in this episode. But it was really more like we were taken before, like as if they don't have any memories of that because that didn't really play into much of the dialogue they did a parody of black mirror so fry must be watching tv made in 2023 so that's how far back the streaming service for him goes which is interesting that by the year 3000 they would still have tv shows this old because they make references to e-readers like siri and facetime things of today and so i was like okay i know that futurama did that quite a bit they integrated modern stuff with with uh, today but they used to have a bit more of a a, a future slant to it and and this feels this is just feels like they're like hey black mirrors that's a tv show look at that okay and that <laughs> Black Mirror is, is, by the way, is an amazing show that of which I still need to see the most recent season myself. But by the year 3023, this is ancient. So, eh. so, so they finally get to the sci-fi device Fry needs to watch all the TV he missed out in an efficient in an efficient way because there's over. 13,020 episodes of the robot show called All My Circuits, which kind of makes sense because it's a robot show. So, of course, they're going to be able to create episodes at a faster rate. So I kind of I kind of don't mind that idea in itself. But the device, really, it didn't really look too futuristic because they're just basically goggles with screws in them that burrow into your head. And most definitely your brain. So it's already too dumb without being too funny. But I suppose the associated the chair that they have and the suit required, that's cool. I, I, I like it. So so there's there's the there's a mix of emotions that I have when I'm watching this. I'm like, I kinda like this, kinda don't like that. And and so it, and on top of that, meanwhile, all this is happening, the, the any kind of humor that Futurama usually has me rolling on the floor laughing. And so then this episode, the witticism is kind of, it missed the mark for me. And so usually the, the outlandishness of the science is fine because they're making me laugh. So when you're going to, if you're going to have the parody of the science fiction, you've got to have the, the humor. So the parody without humor becomes an issue, and that that might just be my fault. Maybe I maybe I lost my sense of humor or something. I have no clue. But the entire drama of the episode is that if they don't get the robot show renewed by Hulu because they're they're calling Hulu instead of Hulu, Fry's brain, which has been disconnected from reality. Okay, so I'm not I'm not spoiling it too much, guys. But um. Fry's brain, which has been disconnected from reality from months of binging, binging will be will in turn be disconnected from his consciousness because um, Farnsworth used a device that showed that only the TV waves are coming through, which must mean that Fry's consciousness is no longer functioning properly, like he's becoming brain dead. And and why didn't anyone care for so many months to check on him? For this eventuality until it had gone too far, we are not told. Well, all this and more does eventually make sense. Actually, we are told why, but that's the part I won't spoil for you. I'm not going to spoil the whole episode. So if you're curious about all that, 
go watch the episode in case you're actually interested because I do have a bit of respect for a show that just came out, especially one that I've loved for 10 seasons. So it was fine, but it, so I'll just I'll just tell you my general feelings. I, it, it was a fine episode, but the worst is that it just really wasn't that funny. I got more enjoyment from catching up on three, like after I watched Futurama last week, I had more fun catching up on the three episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia with my husband, which was uh, the 2021 season because we're two seasons behind. And so they were doing like post-COVID stuff because that was the thing. And even mired in the, 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 the weird politics that they mentioned, it was still funny because because they they still have that sense of humor so i guess i still have a sense of humor in in effect that that is still a funny show but i'm still behind two seasons on it so anyway i'm not going to talk about sunny but it wasn't it wasn't egregious or anything so i'm hoping for more wit and less blandness in the writing for the second episode so i'm going to keep watching that and so i didn't i didn't get a chance to talk about it last week because i ran out of time and the, the fact was that I had to leave and we only had a short time to talk about the UFO episode because I had to leave during due to family meetings, uh, due to family reasons. Chrono says, good news, everyone. And Pleasant Valley Picker says, Simpsons goes decades. Firefly canceled after half a season. Go figure. <clears throat> Cosmic Fury, I'm googling that. That isn't fair at all, PvP agreed. The term particle wave applies here, or light mass, not to be confused with hard light. Yeah, right. No knowing between the wave and the particle and everything. It's important. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Tony. You're you're always an incredible source of knowledge, and I appreciate your presence here on the internet. And that with everybody else who are also hanging out with me, even though I said I was going to end an hour ago and my show is still going. I, if you did have, people did have to leave from between now and then. I do realize other people are streaming at this time. Let, let's go see. I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you who's streaming in just a little bit. So you know where to go next if you, if you haven't already. I could be in a circus. So I missed my call. Well, no, you said you could. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> PvP says Fox canceled another sci-fi show Dark Angel after its season 2 cliffhanger so that they could put on Firefly. Well, you know what? That was a good reason to cancel something because Firefly is pretty cool. And they showed the episodes out of order with the pilot last. Yeah, well <sighs> Fox does have that that terrible effect of creating some pretty cool shows and then canceling them before their time. Firefly included. The most glaring case. UFO is another one, but not by Fox. That's a British TV show. So that was by a different different broadcasting company. Canadian Spider-Man says, Hey, thanks for saying that, Antiderivative Jill. I've spent all my money on travel, thus not much money for starships and lightsabers. The experiences are worth it, though. Yes, especially if you're documenting your experience with your, your phone, you know, if you're, you're recording, using your camera to make memories. And then those, you'll be able to look back on all of your pictures, all of your videos, and share them with us, which makes it even more valuable. I just love that you share with us your those experiences. Those are priceless. All the money that you spend on it are on something priceless. So thank you so much for for leading such a cool life. Chrono says math is part of physics. Oh, yes. Physics class is all math. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it is. Oh, definitely. No kidding. And I, that's why I had some trouble when I got into advanced math in, in school when I was still in high school because I was in calculus and then I was in math and physics and I was in the advanced physics class, which required calculus. So I had a hell of a time keeping up with the calculus and the physics because, because they were putting the calculus in the physics. And I was like, oh, shit. But I, I understand the calculus now. 
I never saw all of Firefly. It's really good. You should. There's not much of it anyway. I can't think of another channel where it's so much fun to listen to the host read chat comments. Aw, that is so sweet of you, Pleasant Valley Picker. I try to make it interesting, and my only regret is that I, I muted my, my my microphone for a while. Eugene Bird, oh, kind-hearted, anti-derivative Jill. We don't want you warping anywhere. <laughs> oh, thank you, Eugene Bird. Well, I won't be warping anytime soon. We're, we can only have thought experiments in Warp Drive for right now. So no worries there. Mm-hmm. Joe was the student who became the teacher. Yeah, exactly. Unlike the speed... Okay, importance is relative, unlike the speed of light, which is absolute. Yeah, it is, it is a constant. The speed of light is a constant. Stanton's Liver was a good movie. Yeah, so yeah, if we're in normal space, definitely uh, there is a cosmic speed limit, which you cannot break. 186 miles per hour or 300 kph. Yes, 300,000 kph, 180,000 miles per hour. Thank you, Captain Finity, for the constant of the speed of light. Dalek451 says, I don't get out often, Jill. Some days I find short walks exhausting. Oh, yeah, now I was the physical manifestation of getting out is definitely a factor. But I was I was talking about the emotional um, energy that is expensed when you're when you're out with a lot of people for too long. <laughs> I although I do I but it's also very important even for introverts to get out and be around people for a while and then go back home and recharge. I have Monday off, stat holiday. Okay, see, that's what I was curious about. Great. Darius says, Jill is so wholesome, I can listen with the door open. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, cool stream. Yeah, and I should be finishing up. The moon is in the sky. It's called the moon, says PvP. I hope to see you guys tonight at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, says St Tony Stark of Iron. And Bird of Prey 5 says, I'm here for the green women. Yes, exactly. So that's that's why we we like to explore. Well, because science fiction is a collaboration between fantasy and science. And that's why it's called science fiction. And the green women are a beautiful side effect of it. And Kapla, Burner Pray 5. Oh, wait, are you? He's probably streaming right now. Speaking of people who are streaming at the moment, I, I do hope he is. Does he have his? Yeah, he has his bed life going. So I'll be I'll be hopping off soon to make way for Burner Pray 5. PVP, 16 of us listening to Jill read the chat. Impressive. Jill reminds me of Bird trying to catch up on the chats. Yeah, and I actually I actually did a good job, I think, of, of expanding on the chats, except for the part where I muted myself. I was probably coughing or something, and so I fucked up there. I will I will try to do better. Emojis are for Vorta. Says, I love emojis. Scotty R37 says, I saw the 13th chapel. Bird could un could ban me? That would be hilarious. Bird would never ban you. You're the unbannable. Are you kidding? PvP says Leonardo was amazing. I'm not talking about the turtle. <laughs> yeah, me neither. And oh, yes, Retro Nerd Girl left around three, probably also to do her own stream. I do think Retro Nerd Girl streams on Fridays. She's she has an incredible show on Friday. Definitely go check her out. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. She has some incredible reviews on lots of different sci-fi movies. If you're interested in those kinds of movies, which you are, if you're listening to my channel, if you're not, then I don't know what you're doing here. Yeah, she's um, she's <laughs> she's talking about fixing the Terminator franchise discussion part one. So that's cool. I bet she has a partner, um, uh, someone to talk to about that, or she's talking with the chat. Which is also incredible to do. 
Scotty R37 says Lizzo is his dad. I don't think that's true. PvP says, oh, those rockin' renaissance folks. Gotta love them. And Chrono said, the 80s movie had its flaws, but was what I grew up with. And Princess Fiona says, not missing out on all that much, honestly, musically speaking, anyway. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to know I'm not missing out too much. Scotty R37 says, I am not wearing socks, which makes logical sense with the knowledge that he's going to go swimming. Like, he's probably already swimming right now as we speak because of how long I am taking to end the live stream. <laughs> So I hope he's not wearing socks. Socks in the pool. That doesn't make sense. Scotty Yard 37 says, I'll fight Jill. And that is why we're really great. We're a really great team in terms of live streaming goes. If he were here now, we would we would be having a time. But he is swimming. Socks need to be washed. Yes, that's true. That also could be why he doesn't have socks. Because he's washing them. It, why he doesn't have socks is a mystery I am only conjecturing through the knowledge that he has given us. PVP says, Politics is a necessary evil. I remember when politicians on both sides would meet in the middle and work out a way to agree and make the country better. Yeah, I know, right? That is the thing. That is what? That is the way we used to go. So, so you did hear me talk about that. So that's good. That was an important kind of discussion that I said and I'm glad that that one went through so it's it's very fun for me right now to figure out where it was that I went silent so somewhere between that and talking about Leonardo da Vinci again the second time is where I am is where I am <clears throat> Scotty R37 says I lost a sock once I'm glad I got it back and so Tony had to clock in at uh, <laughs> almost an hour ago. Bouncing here and there and everywhere, says Scotty R37. Team Cap. Much love to everyone. And uh, Krona says, I didn't hate that cartoon. And PvP says, being obese is not good as it is unhealthy. I'm overweight and need to walk. My knees are not great, though. So so pain makes it a challenge. So maybe you could have, would it be easier to do? Is it easier for you to use a bicycle, like a, a standing bicycle? That way you can watch your shows and your movies and just uh, use your bicycle. Because just any type of movement is good. If you're moving, that's a good thing. So, the, yeah, so one of the things I was saying back when everybody was making fun of Lizzo, those very incredibly funny jokes, but that, it, of course, you can be beautiful at that weight, but to say you're healthy at that weight is a false statement. So that's what PVP is reinforcing here, that it does lead to things like heart disease and diabetes and all sorts of problems. So once you reach that certain critical mass, of uh, you, you, you're going to start to have some problems. Um, oh, great. Now I have that theme in my brain. And Princess Fiona said that Lizzo eyes is a real thing. I don't know what that is. And of course, now all this employment harassment, sex scandal stuff is coming out. I don't know any of that. I don't follow any of that. I don't know anything about it. But thank you. Scotty R37 says balloons. Oh, if he's going swimming, he doesn't have socks. And there are balloons. Could Scotty be at a birthday party? I'm just putting the pieces together, seeing that a story can be mathematics, too. So, Canadian Spider-Man says, I know what you're thinking there, Scotty R37. PvP says, Jill, have you ever watched Don Rickles' videos on YouTube? His entire comedy was based on insulting everyone in the audience. He was great. Oh, yeah, and that's that's pretty cool. I do like interactive comedy. Thank you. Stark of Iron says, Team Stark. And remember, DeLoreans are not portal guns. Dimensional travel 
is different than temporal manipulation. Good night, everybody. So, as far as I know, the DeLorean is a fantasy time machine. And so, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd agree. It's not, you're not going into a different, you're going into an alternate reality, but not a different dimension. Well, wait a minute. Why not? Why why can't you create different timelines going back into the past? I think that makes that actually makes sense to me because that's the universe saying we're not going to allow this paradox to exist. Therefore, a different reality is going to be branching off from this point, and that would be why you cannot change history. Scotty Year thirty seven says Jill's streams are so much better than when I don't have to wade through other <laughs> people. Solo Jill is delightful. I'm aw. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Scotty. And I hope you have fun swimming. And so Captain America is superior to Iron Man. <laughs> I okay. Um, you're the comic book genius. Sky R37 says, I hate that Praxis Reeves. I know you do. You gotta get over your hang up, Scotty, and enjoy the Stargate with me at some point. And Spidey says, yes, but Spider-Man is stronger and faster than Captain America, even. Team Spidey, says Stark of Iron. <clears throat> and, okay, so this is the moment where my mic died. And so that is that is the bulk of the chat that I was able to, that I was able to respond to. And so that is the chat that I responded to. Scotty R37 said Steve Rogers is squeaky clean example of good of all the good that I can aspire to, even Peggy's. And uh, Scotty R37 said Jill died, so that was so I'm up to the chat where I was muted, so I should be close to real time. And so after Scotty did me the great favor of telling me over and over in the chat that I was not here. Like I had a link to anybody could have came in here and been like, "Hey, you're, you're well." I'm not. I'm not going to get mad at people for not coming into the show or anything. I'm not that kind of person. But, but that's always a possibility too because I did like send out a bunch of links. Um, but I'm not. I'm not saying anything. Y'all are all perfect. Thank you guys for being in the chat. I'm grateful for you being in the chat. PVP says, I'm relaxed, Scotty. She's going through the chat, so so she is here, just no sound. <laughs> yeah, I was here. I was going through the chats, and I was responding to all of them. But I tried to go back up to where I was before, so I did my best to do that. To go over them again in a less, in a less engaging manner, because the first time I did it was amazing. And Scotty R37 says, I will arm wrestle. And that you are a seafood salad. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, what? Oh, because Kronos wants a tuna. So okay, so Kronos is getting hungry. So it's time for lunch. I hope you guys have a good, good day and have some good food. And so I'm still muted at this point. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Wasted content. <laughs> Welcome back, unmuted Jill. I moved to the couch. Wasted Scotty. Toasted Scotty. <laughs> Laughy Hurdy. The Phantom Zone. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying a bunch of random stuff. So I was apparently muted for three to five minutes. And somebody, for some reason, it, this, this, this whole conversation went to Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk is... Is a 1991 American action comedy film directed by Michael Lemon. Bruce Willis stars in the title role and also co-wrote both the story and the theme song. I have not seen Hudson Hawk clearly, but I will put it on my list. So live on the air, you get to add to Antiderivative Jill's list of movies. And that could happen at any moment, at any time. You guys, y'all geeks know way more. Because I'm, uh, y'all know way more about movies than I do. And I'm only here to learn. I am, I'm here to learn the science. I'm here to learn the fiction. I love it both. And I don't think there's a problem with wanting to know both. 
And Donnie says, it's a Power Rangers Star Trek mashup artwork that someone came up with when I just shared. Oh, you just shared. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so Donnie just shared with us this and the chat. Check this out. Twitter.com slash Royum. Okay, so I will put that in a new tab. Where did that tab go is the question. Let me just copy the link because I can't. I can't internet at this moment. Bit of stream brain going. Let's see. Oh, okay. So let's share. Let's share this for a minute and stop sharing the chat. And I'll share Donnie's. Donnie's. Uh, this Rohim art. Power Rangers New World. Auxiliary Rangers is Klingon. I can imagine a Megazord transformation from the USS Enterprise space cat. And that's one of what's one of the kind of things that people like to do with their fandoms is mash them together. What would it be like if you took one universe you love and another universe you love and smash them together? What would happen? And so that's the sort of fan fiction that people engage in that can be fun. And so, yes, I did all the cursing that Gorilla's Random Thoughts would ever want because I had, I had messed up. And Scotty says, I heard nothing. I got to go swimming. Oh, okay. So you got here when I was not talking. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. I had a lot of cool stuff that I was talking about before. So only people actually listening at that point could have told me where I went out. And so Scotty is currently swimming because he said this about an hour ago. He's swimming without socks, which is good. You shouldn't wear socks when you're swimming. Dead air is like a zombie. Zombie air. Oh, well, that would be undead air, Kronos. Undead air could be like a zombie or a vampire. And when you're when you're when you have undead air, you're sucking the blood out of something. I don't know what. I need to think about that some more. What's happening? Kronos says, just hold your breath. If a microphone goes mute in the forest, is Jill still talking? Yeah. That's what just happened earlier in my live stream. And I had to pick it back up after that. And I hope I did a good job because the, 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 the numbers in the chat went down even further when I actually found my microphone button. So Deadpool is an anti-hero, but I, I'm thinking that's because so many cool other cool people are streaming right now. And that's the meet, that's the reason for the divergence in interest. Chrono says, I hope there will be a good Deadpool 3. Me too. I actually, I was looking, I was so looking forward to that, but now it's been pushed out even further because of the writer strike. So everything's been pushed out. Ghostbusters has been pushed out. I was looking forward to that for Christmas. I wanted to see a uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel for Christmas. And I know, I know some people have problems with the kids, but I like them and I wanted to see more. And I was hoping that this, this, uh, the sequel that we were going to see in December was going to have more of the original guys in it, obviously without Spangler because he, uh, Harold Ramis is no longer with us, but, but, um, I was, I was hoping to see the rest of the guys there and go back to New York and have some fun. You know, help, helping the kids figure things out because they're too young to do it by themselves. And that's that's the great that's the right way to hand off the torch is realizing the deficiencies in the new generation and helping them overcome them and making it sort of a teamwork kind of thing instead of casting it aside or saying that past never happened. Embracing the past is the key to winning the hearts and minds of people and it worked for me for afterlife and i think they can do even better in a sequel where they focus more on the originals <clears throat> and pvp says probably jill probably told us how she adores all when she was accidentally muted yeah i did i did i did and i said it uh, 
Anyway, the muted part was hilarious, says Carlos. Thank you. I wrapped up my stream. 420 was long enough. Oh, okay, great. Someone was growing something. Light. Okay, well, we did have, except when it is traveling at the speed of light, it, it has, because mass turns into energy. and um, So, Tony helps us out with that math. But all together, we can all explore all of the eventualities of science. Chrono says, how can you prove photons have no mass? And so Tony had the answer for that earlier in the chat. See what he said. I should have copied it. Hmm. And so now I'm looking for a chat, a particular chat that I liked earlier. But, you know, StreamYard is a bunch of shit because there should be a way you should be able to, like, search your chat. Like, I want to be able to search the chat. Oh, wait, I can do it over here. Oh, no, because it doesn't have all my chat here. So I can't do it here. Yeah, so StreamYard would be a lot better if I can actually search the StreamYard. And so I can't, and so, and, and that's the frustrating thing about StreamYard, is not being able to search it. The search feature should be a stupid feature. It should be a feature, damn it. Like, give me a search feature in StreamYard, please. I think when I end this live stream and it says, how was your live stream? I'm going to give it that, that suggestion. I'm sure they've had that suggestion before, but it would help a whole bunch. And not only going back to a chat that you might have missed that someone says, hey, miss this chat. Can you please go read it? And, and so that would be really helpful. Photons have, okay, so here's the Tony quote about photons and their mass. Photons have zero resting mass. So when they're just, they're just being light. They, they they are they have zero mass when they they have mass when they're in motion which is at light speed so so they have mass when they have mass they bend and lens to others have heavier mass in space time and so that that's that's our that's our going conjecture on that And so there's the not wearing any socks. So let's see. The stars are nice, but the searching would be better. StreamYard, if you're listening. I'm just yelling at StreamYard at this point in my live stream, which probably means I probably should quit. Oh, okay. I think I'm almost there. Subscribe to Courtney. Oh, yeah, I, I don't see Courtney too much, but I do want you to subscribe to her. She's cool. The warp drive thing. That is absolute gold. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I gave you something to, to, to talk about. I'm so happy. Pleasant Valley Picker says, favorite Simpsons episode early season. Bart had a skateboard and Homer borrowed it. And he decided he could fly across the canyon. He was like, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. As he dropped. Oh, right. Yeah. And then we had the first really long sequence of someone getting completely pummeled and somehow surviving. So like Homer Simpson is kind of has a superpower of not dying quite a bit. And uh, of course, he is a cartoon. But there are other cartoon characters in The Simpsons who have similar, similar physical manifestation uh, injuries and they do die. So Krona says, I don't have the ability to see feature on the shows. So I, I do give you a bit of my ideas on the first episode there that I had left over from my notes from last time. And Donnie says, I love Futurama, especially its kick butt theme to Me Too. The theme song, it just fills me up with so much happiness every time I hear it. So that is a good, that is a good show. 
Pleasant Valley Picker says, Jill, there's a real show with over a thousand episodes. It's the 1960s series called Dark Shadows, a gothic horror soap opera. 1,225 episodes from that ran from 1966 to 1971? Wow. In just that short amount of time, they had over a thousand episodes? That's bonkers, PVP. Thank you for telling me about that. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> Dark Shadows. Is that any good? It's a oh yeah. He he follows up to tell me yes. It was a great show. Features Barnabas Collins, a centuries old vampire, the first brooding vampire with a conscience. Template for Angel and Spike. We enjoy Jill, and Jill enjoys the chat. I do. What is calculus? That's another live stream. I should I should tell you all about it. But it, it, it is either mathematics or you've got problems with your teeth. Kronos says, Warp 10 makes peeps into salamanders. <laughs> oh, dear. One day I should do a live stream about that episode. But if you do want to hear more about Voyager, make sure you tune into to Times tomorrow at 9 p.m. Central Times for start their Saturday night Star Trek. Saturday night Star Trek, I never miss it because it is just like being in a Star Trek convention. Just a mini little one every week. Like I, I thought it would, and I know this is true because I've been to a Star Trek convention, but this is even better because it takes out all of the celebrities and gives you the best part, which is the other fans to talk to. And I, of course, I like the celebrities too, but it is, it is much more fun to talk to your friends and hang out and that's exactly what you get when you go when you go to Clobby's channel. He's so fun. Yes, and PvP says the DeLorean was a real car produced for a few years, but the company went broke. Yeah, because it wasn't a particularly good car, but it looked cool. Jill should start streams where she just reached. Well, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. And um, Nemesis is popping in to say hi and hit the like button. Hey, Nemesis. It's so great to hear from you. And I, I'm catching up with the chat. And um, PvP says, when I curse, it is adorable. I'm, I'm glad. And so um, Stream Elements wants you to know ScottyR37's Twitter handle. It's easy. It's at ScottyR37. Well, cartoon characters are good at not dying. Yeah, uh, Scotty has some really funny tweets every once in a while. So and some of them don't make any sense and some of them are funny. And some of them are both funny and don't make any sense. I love them. Dalek451 says, over 1,000 episodes in just five years? That's insane. One Piece only recently hit 1,000 episodes and that took over 20 years. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. But with that, I better I better be going. I I had a wonderful time talking about the science of fast and light travel with you guys and with Tony. Tony made this such a cool live stream for the first couple of hours. And if he were if he would have stayed around, I would have wanted to talk to him about um, the two dimensional visualization of the Alcubierre drive and uh, what it what it meant for expanding and contracting space-time on a flat region. So it's like, some of this stuff, it's beyond me. And so I'm here trying to learn just like you guys. And so it would have been really cool to learn a bit more about this positive and this negative energy and what it meant and what it means to space travel. And how it, how it is affected by the... And enforced by the universal speed limit given by general relativity. And the propulsion needed to make it happen. And I think we did touch on some of that. We definitely did. And hopefully, hopefully it did come across. And that's why, that's why so many episodes in a few years, uh, PVP says, I'll treat you tweet you info on dark shadows later it's a daytime soap opera it was on five days a week oh my god it sounds a lot better than days of our lives if anyway since it at least had a at least it had a supernatural slant to it 
Hmm. Yeah. So, so yes, this was, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun talking to you guys about this stuff and I hope to do it again soon. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I will talk to you guys later. And next time you see me, I, I mean, I might be around on the internet. Sometimes I visit other channels. Obviously, I'll be in the chat on Clobby Show Saturday Night Star Trek tomorrow. And so we'll. <laughs> Listen, you bunch of tarts, it's clobbering time! <laughs> Tomorrow we'll have that. We'll have clobbering time. So you don't want to know where I am at 9 p.m. Central. I'm in the chat at Clobbies. And we'll be talking about Voyager. And I actually I actually do share the Voyager episodes in my Cosme around noon central time on Saturdays. So if you ever want to join my Cosme, it's in a link on my on my YouTube homepage. Like if you look at the links at the top of the YouTube. I do have my Cosme thing there, so if you want to add me there, if you're if you're on that website, you can be friends with me and know when I'm sharing stuff. Um, and if you want, you can watch Voyager with me. I watch the four episodes that are going to be reviewed on Clobby's show, and I started doing that because sometimes I procrastinate and I don't finish watching the show, so this way I force myself to watch the show, so even if I'm just watching by myself... I keep watching it because of because I'm sharing it publicly. And, and oh, and speaking to that, yes, PVP asks you doing Voyager tomorrow. Yes, I will be watching Voyager tomorrow. And you know, I'm just I'm and otherwise I'm just having a whole lot of fun on the internet and watching trying to watch movies. I've got an incredible list of movies I'm trying to get through. I finally saw Blues Brothers. Absolutely amazing and perfectly timed to juxtapose with the filth episode uh, that tried to be a musical and was absolutely just awful. I, I only saw a few a bits of it, but it it was very clunkily done, to say the least. But I don't really want to talk about that. I usually don't like to talk about it because it isn't fun. And I like to focus on what's fun and what I like versus what things that I do not find fun or pleasure in. And uh, no, I, I have not watched them. I'm sorry. It, it is on my list. That is definitely already on my list. And so right now, this is a part of the live stream where PvP shames me for all of the movies I haven't seen. <laughs> So yes, um, speaking of them, Pop Culture Curator did a review on them, I think on Tuesday, so check that out. And, and so I'll be going. And, uh, okay, so who's live streaming right now? Ch please check out Bird of Prey 5, Retro Nerd Girl, and also the Comic Relief Crusader's having his two-year anniversary, right? Comic Relief Crusader is still live he's still live see go go check out comic relief crusader retro nerd girl bird of prey 5 they're all streaming on this friday and it is a big internet so go go find your fancy and have a great time that is just the stupidest phrase i've ever said i'm sorry <laughs> i'm not shaming just recommending i know no it kind of is though because these are movies i should have seen already it's it it it, it hurts no, the ones that hurt the most. I know those are the ones I should see first. But on Tuesday, I will have a Star Trek review on the next episode of the original series in production order. I'll be reviewing Gamesters of Triskelion. So I'll leave you with that clip and a few more clips. We'll see whatever I come up with. And I'll see you all next time. Bye now. Captain's log, star date 3211.8. We find ourselves on a strange and hostile planet surrounded by creatures belonging to races scattered all through the galaxy. I am Galt, the Master Thrall. You are to be trained and spend the rest of your lives here. We are 1,000 of your meters beneath the surface.
you sounding like Spock. If you're going to get nasty, I'm going to leave. Fortunately, of course, I am immune to its effect. Absolutely smashing. I've been acting for 35 years. 135 credits on IMDb. I was in a long-running series. You might remember it. Star Trek. But all I'm known for is combing the desert and saying, we ain't found shit. All right, move along. Done. Stop it. Get off of the fucking things. Go outside. Get some food. It's like, you know, there's, it's a time of day where you live. Go do something. <laughs> Shut up, Snoopy. I don't care. You smoke too much. Let's go. Let's go adventure. Let's go explore.